So, yeah. last time. Last time, everybody met the neighbors going around and uh, finding out everybody who basically lived on the street. You had various sort of people that uh, have different types of wares. You had a bookstore. You had a, um, a private eye. You had a woodworker. You had a forge by a married uh, two married men. And you had a uh, essentially an apothecary and garden by a non-binary uh, person. And you were the sixth one. And there was a sewer grate. So... Going around meeting everybody, you eventually went back to your Troll School Manor to start moving around some more furniture and figuring out how to basically cut down the costs of um, basically all the money that you need to raise to actually open up a tavern. Um, with that, you had a few more potentially ghost encounters, random things moving around and scaring everybody. Um, but at the end of the day, Mousy getting something from his two-way radio slash uh, sending stone. Got a call to uh, meet Jalester Silvervane at the Yawning Portal uh, for a mission from the Order of the Gauntlet. I'm sorry, the Lord's Alliance. Lord's Alliance. Lord's Alliance. Yes. Uh, with that, he ushered the three of you out, quickly changed into his uh, rat... Vigilante costume and uh, was going to basically meet rat up with themed. you as you guys got there. Rat themed. Um, with that. With my knowledge of the city, I was able to get there before them. Yep. This. Oh, yeah. So you are <laughs> all the way down here. All the way at the Yawning Portal? Yes. Uh, oh, I will say that since, Joey, you are might be sleepy and fatigued or whatever, we're probably not going to have a long session today. We'll have plenty of stuff to do, but uh, uh, we'll keep it on the short side just in case you're not... Uh, just in case the, the booster shot catches up with you. <laughs> well, that should be oh, fine. Was that a HIPAA violation? Did I violate HIPAA? I guess we'll never know. <laughs> but let's see if anybody... I should be fine, though. Um, I'm a lot more okay. weak now. So let me do the... Uh, I will do a random encounter in the trades board. I'm grab my book. And Way to keep the immersion. <laughs> I take out my ledger. I need somebody to roll me a d6. Or a d3 if you want to just do the manual thing. Four. Well, you did four. We will cut that down to two. Overhead, uh, as you all meet up, you see a griffin cal. You see a griffin uh, piloted or ridden by a gr griffin cavalry rider. Cool. He sort of lands near you guys uh, as you. Uh, we'll say that Mousy has not met up with him. He's, he's waiting in the yawning portal. He's like, "Where is, is everybody?" And he meets up with uh, Sharp Tooth. Fruit Trick and Simon. Sort of, uh, this guy lands nearby after spotting you. Hey, uh. Hey, I wonder if you guys can help me out a little bit. I have been trying to, uh. Pretty much studying the flow of traffic, trying to prepare for an upcoming festival in the Trades Ward. Okay, let's just keep moving. Let's well, ignore. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. I, you, you would also know the cavalry rider is probably part of the city watch. It's not just a random person. Yeah, I should have mentioned that. <laughs> now, now, hold on, you nobody's in trouble. Don't, don't worry. Make it worth your while. I'll give you guys five gold pieces uh, if you can move as fast as you can to uh, the honorable knight. He points over nearby. Um, I actually say I'll point go I need you to go to the next ward. So head on over to the uh the dock or actually this is the castle ward. I want you to find Castle Waterdeep. And he he uh uh base race, you would you would know where this is and let me put it on your map and quick. There's a background layer. So oh, that is the wrong layer. You don't you can't see the background layer and I can't turn it off. 
<laughs> just a deal with it. Okay. Yep. So over here on the left. Okay, not as far as I was expecting. Yeah. Because you're close enough, so. I need you guys to go over there as fast as possible. Or, not as fast as possible, but with great haste. Uh, I'll give you guys five gold here for your group. Uh, and, uh,. I just need to study it and just to, to see how if it's a good flow for traffic and how long it's going to take you. Sound good to you guys? Did, so do we have to go there and then back to get the gold? No, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll meet you there. I'll be flying overhead. Here, just to show I'm serious, take one gold right now. Hands it to a uh, base wraith. I'll give you the other four when you get to uh, the castle. You don't need to go up to the castle. Just get to the entrance and I will follow you. Uh, base Wraith will turn to the rest of the party and say, Five golds, five gold! Uh, but, um, uh, ru running isn't really my forte. Not That's okay, a Simon. I can carry you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, either way, it works. I just want to, we'll, we'll have people carrying children in the, uh, in the festival, so this actually is relevant. All right, uh, I will see you there. Uh, he flies off and is sort of circling overhead in your vicinity. You never quite lose sight of him, and he is essentially watching you. So Not really. That, that, that isn't, and then he probably gets cut off as he's picked up. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, here's here the we question. Go. Here's the question. Is it carrying a damsel-type carrying, or is it a piggyback ride? It's a, it's a sh shoulder ride, so it's up higher. <laughs> oh, so he you, you put him to sit on the shoulder. Okay. Yeah, so he's really tall right now. He's like nine feet plus. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Uh, he's not yeah, I would like you to roll like a D, I would like you to roll a D one hundred. This could go up. Awfully well, you mean? <laughs> too bad. Too bad I'm not there. I have the uh, the urchin background, so I can get around faster. Right. Right. <laughs> But it yeah, you're, you're just waiting somewhere. here. It's like, where is everybody? They should have been here right now. As they just completely walk past the yarding portal and go street down. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I uh, see them like run by. You know, like, hey guys, and you just keep in brute trick keeps running. With that, um you now enter into the castle ward. Ooh. On the way, okay. however, Brutrick. You uh, aren't quite, you're quite used to your head, but you're not quite used to the extra side about you. So uh, uh, Simon is uh, unfortunately forced to sort of dodge extra like signposts and things like that. Uh, I'd like you to make a, uh, Bon, I'd like you to make a, um, uh, let's just say dexterity save. I am declaring that it is a disadvantage. Okay, even though it's a 16, uh, I'll still give it to you. Um, you are just super afraid that Brutrick's going to drop you, so you are all, like, really on edge and dodging everything. You're like, nope, 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 nope. But you managed to get through without hitting your head on a bunch of things. Uh, as you get there, the Griffin Rider come, heads on down, circles back on down, comes out, ah, good job, that'll help me figure some things out. In my report. Yes, uh, here's the rest of your gold. Hands you uh, the four gold that you're owed. And thank you all. Much. Have a great day in the city of Waterdeep. I guess we have to walk back anyways, because that's actually where we're going. Yeah, so yeah, you're not that far ahead. away. That's why I picked that, because it was on the map. Um, <laughs> May I make a comment, Mark? Yes. So I was just looking around at street names, and I saw one thing. It says that can't be what it says. And I zoomed in, and not too far away, there's a place called Virgin Square. <laughs> what happens at Virgin Square, Mark? I don't have anything. It's probably part of the red light district in which everybody stops having sex because there's a red light. Oh, that's how that works. <laughs> yeah, they have to wait until it turns green. <laughs> Food games are happening. <laughs> I wonder if that's in like an older sort of like thing they, they have in older editions or stories they've gone there. <laughs> um heading on down, you, you pass Y1 alley just, just around the corner from the yawning portal, and you do see uh 
three people looks like they're rolling dice uh, in an alleyway, and it looks like they're they're really really like into it. And it's like, oh man, low again. Uh, you cheat me. You cheat me, Victor. He's like, yeah, you're just bad at the game. <laughs> what do you guys do? So, um, Sharp Tooth is gonna grab uh, Mousy, Simon, and uh, Brutrick together and be like, guys, we could. We could like double, triple, quadruple our our five gold here. Do you think we Wait, should do it? Mousy's not there just yet. Oh, sorry, yeah, not. The other, the other two are. Yeah. I'm wandering around the streets looking for them, and I see them huddled together. Okay, and I, uh, we'll say it's close enough that you can do that. Yeah, I walk up to him, saying, "Where were you guys? Where were you guys? I was looking for you." Chapter <laughs> two's gonna show the five gold. Like, look what we got. We just had to walk moderately fast. Uh, if somebody wants to add that to the... Um, yeah, I'm about to. Yeah. And maybe maybe clean up the gold city because there's a, like a 75-piece thing uh, elsewhere. Or it's 11 silver pieces off the... Uh, you, you'll clean it up. Anyway. Anyway, continue. <laughs> you take the five gold and you put it in your, your rucksack. Yeah, sorry, Rat King. We were just helping out one of the Griffin Riders to map out the city for an event. Uh, the, the city's flying protectors. I've always admired them. Yeah, too They're bad like the they're rats of the sky. <laughs> I, I, I much prefer <laughs> staying on the ground, thanks. Too bad there aren't flying rats. Hey, Rat King? Same. Ah. <laughs> Yeah. That looks all sad. Sharptooth is going to turn to uh, Rat King and say, With this five gold, I see a couple of people betting over there. I bet that we can bet our money to maybe quadrupleize it or something. What do you think? Well, uh, we, we have a member of the Lord Alliance awaiting our our call. I just wanted to get a group, yay or nay, before before just running off the gold. Mous Mousy, can you make an intelligence check or a uh, perception check? Eleven. Eleven. Okay, you're good. You take a look down and you just see a couple guys uh, uh, playing dice. That's about it, yeah. I go off. Uh, just uh, watch your wallet. That's all I'm saying. I just shove my coins down my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly <laughs> safe, then. Ting, ting, ting. You hear a couple of them fall out the bottom. <laughs> oh. No, they're actually... We'll say they're actually puns. <laughs> well, don't let me stop you. There's so many holes in my underwear. <laughs> um, Patrick's like, I don't really believe in gambling, so I'm going to have to give you a big name. Simon, what do you think? Uh, well, it, it would depend upon the uh, the chances of uh, of success, though. Um, uh, I I don't really believe that it would be uh, worth the effort. I know. Although I, I do to... wonder if they I do wonder if they have a gambling permit. Honestly, probably no. That's just old sharp tubes guess there. That's my bet on their bet. I can't stand for this. I go. I I find the nearest shadow. I jump out of it in front of them. And I go, yeah. gentlemen, may I see your gambling permit? Make a uh, in, uh, intimidation, intimidation check. I feel like that's really hard to do as a halfling. Four. It's bright daylight. Remember. <laughs> Uh, they look at you and be like, ah, okay. 
Uh, he takes out uh, his wallet and hands you a gambling permit. Allowed to gamble oh, in over. the castle ward. I want to look at it. Make sure it's the chest. <laughs> make a uh, make an investigation check. Eighteen. What is the... What's the... What's the uh, GM whisper role, Joey? Is it GW? I don't know. I just whispered to on Discord. Oh, I see it, uh... Well, I'm trying to whisper to myself, so it's like... Oh. Oh, with oh, the dice yeah. roll? Yeah. I forget. There, I found it. It was a slash GR for GM roll. Uh, in the dice thing in the upper left, uh, there's a button in the uh, uh, in there that you can click uh, to make whatever you roll be a GM one. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah it is. Okay, cool. All right, thank you. Uh, what did you get, Joey? 18? 18. Yeah, this is totally fake. Huh. I go, forgery. Yeah, uh, what are you talking about? Does it look like I can forge something? He holds up. He's got uh, three missing fingers. What? Well, like, what, how can I tell it's a it's a fake? Uh, okay. So you're looking it over. It looks sloppy. It doesn't have a signet uh, or any sort of official seal on it, like a signet ring marking or or anything like that. Um, permit is misspelled. Permit's misspelled. It, it's also written in crayon. Crayon's has a great abundance here. I list that <laughs> off to him. And you go, what the most important is you're missing the seal of the of the gambling guild to legalize this this uh Well, yeah, what are you uh, gonna whatever. do about it then? What are you gonna do about it then? I I uh point to brew trick. You know, my friend here is not a big fan of gambling. That's very true. I don't <laughs> like gambling at all. Make uh, each of you make an intimidation check. Sharp Tooth is like, oh no, we're gonna lose money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm imagining the big pockets after. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing better. Um. All right. Well, let me roll this and see what happens. You not because everything's really nice. <laughs> uh oh, they still rolled shit. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, even with your unintimidating un nine, uh, they're like, uh oh, all right. Should, are you, should should we? Where should we go to get a uh, uh, an official permit? They're like, what? What are you doing? Very helpful. So what are you? I very helpfully. Turns helpfully, uh, I'm sorry. I very helpfully take out a map and I direct them to the, to the nearest uh, notary, notary office or whatever. Okay. And I go and, and first, and I say for a small amount of gold, they can not only provide you with a license to uh, be street performers and a gambling license, and uh, like you'll find it be a very. If, if we do this, will you just let us be then? At this point, I trust him. I go, yeah. Stay out of trouble, you two. You three. All right. And, uh, start heading on in the direction you uh, uh, you uh, point them to. Uh, you, you'll notice that a couple of them are missing fingers. Not just the one that was talking to you. A couple of them are. Like all of us? Or... Not you. Uh, I'll say that Mousy because he's right. He got close. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're not missing fingers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Would that be uncommon? <laughs> like, do they cut off fingers or ceiling? Nope, that's here? not. Uh, nope, but yeah, it's not. It's not like that. Um, yeah, this is not. I mean, people having major injuries in like a crime area is a big thing, but this is not. Probably even in this area, it's not. Uh, it's not very likely that all of them would be like that. <laughs> Can I make a history ch like a check to see if I know of any crime organizations? Yeah, make a like, make a history check. 
Uh, this is just what it's happens easy. when they uh, when they end up betting that they don't have money. <laughs> I bet you one uh, index. I wouldn't want to bet here. So, you don't know of any crime syndicates that would like do this sort of thing as either punishment or uh, a calling card or um, uh, initiation or anything like that. Not not to this kind of like random sort of pattern that they have. They all seem to be on like the non dominant hand. Um, Simon. Uh, Yeah. Mm, make an intelligence check, because based on something you said, I want to wanna see if this happens. Natural 20. Well, you, he didn't say that, but... I, I'm going to say that you did say that to, to either... Or you thought it. He thought it or something, because it did something to do this. He took it around and was like, uh, you see that uh, there's some fresh blood on the ground and uh, a couple of loose fingers, and you kind of deduce the fact that we're... we're were they betting just to see if they lose? Who, whoever loses has to cut off a finger? Um. Yeah, I'll. I'll uh, <laughs> I, I, he'll point out the fingers, and uh, I, I don't even want to uh, imagine uh, what kind of betting that they were doing. I don't think they're going to go get a permit then. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, <gasps> liars! But they're like, it's far away now. I can't do anything. Yeah, they've. Uh, I go, it's, been a, it's been a bit so they're they've gone around. I go. I go the, the 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 privacy of this city, the privacy of the city, always yes. surprises me. Uh, on the plus side, uh, there there is a limitation on the how many times they can bet. <laughs> he's got a point. He's pointer finger will... over there. <laughs> <laughs> the problem will eventually uh, uh, yes. so, <laughs> so I say, uh, well, uh, hello again, my friends. Um, I hope the new manner is suiting suiting you well, and uh, I do believe. We have an appointment at the Yawning Portal. It, yes. Um, let, let's go there and away from here. Mousy right, has told me you have very nice neighbors. Yeah, have a very diverse, a very diverse and politically correct set of neighbors. <laughs> That's true. It is true. There was really nice I mean, like, flowers. There was an adorable couple making steel and steel uh, accessories. There's this guy that had so many beds. We almost made a bed cafe. And not one of them tried to threaten us. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice change of pace. <laughs> <laughs> For Simon, yes. <laughs> Had I had like two days of, of non-violence. <laughs> you head to the yawning portal, uh, you were all just briefly outside. Or right outside of it. I already put you guys on the map. Down there. Where's the front door? Right there. Okay, so Yawning Portal, it, it is midday or so, so the Yawning Portal is filled with people. They're not on the map because crowds are annoying. But what do you do? I open the door and quickly hide the shadows. Uh, make a stealth check. Let's say with advantage, just because you're, uh... Yep, not even need that. Dirt answer to that. Ah, buddy! Go fix the latch in the door and open the wind to open it again. Going right over. Is oh, no. As Bonnie's approaching, I start to I start to panic a little bit. <laughs> um, uh, I would assume the rest of us come in too. Yes. Oh, oh Simon. Uh, yeah, there you are, Mike. Oh, there you go. And I'm and I'm thankful when uh, the others walk in. 
It's like, oh. oh, uh, no, no, dear Dan, it was just, uh, it's just customers. Uh, it's those, it's those guys that took out the, uh, the, uh, the troll. I was like, ah, welcome back to the Yawning Portal. Haven't had any other trolls since. It might be pretty boring for you guys. Ha <laughs> ha. I have one voice I do for every NPC. This <laughs> one. It's comforting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh. oh, and boring would be would be appreciated. Yes. I want to Come scan on, the, the room. I want to scan uh, the room for my contact. I'll say it's easy enough for you to find. He is he is up in the uh, private booth uh, up here. What is, what is his name like? Like Silvermane or something? Oh yeah, let me make sure you guys can see his uh, in plate. There you go. Because. Okay. I don't see a silver vein. He's not a Lionel. Um, so what I know this person. Do uh, you said you had a people. Gordon, a, a, a Commissioner Gordon type um, relationship, with him, so you would know him. Yeah, that's why you're able to find him so easily. I, I kind of sigh and go. Oh, he's all the way in the back, and I look at all the people. And I'm going to attempt to do my best to sneak all the way around. Okay. <laughs> to the back of the thing, hiding behind tables and stuff, so I'm, like, right next to him. And I can make, make a, a surprise uh, appearance. Make a stealth check. I might be able to help making a distraction. One, 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 one. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, pretty bad. Sharptooth, at, so Sharptooth's going the other way in front of the bar, so that way they're, they go by three strings, and they're just gonna let out a rancid, like, fart as they walk by. And just keep walking and letting it linger. Uh, uh, he goes over here and just jumps on this empty table. Starts pairing from that. Starts, <laughs> starts playing from that. Uh, potentially that distracted. Uh, so for me. Uh, it, it did not. As soon as you were walking out over he here... Um, Make sure I can grab the thing. Oh, it's not bad. Coming out of uh, the lavatory, and you get hit right by the door as they come on out. Boom! Like back to the future, <laughs> back to the future two style. Oh, nice. They're like, oh, oh, pardon, pardon me, uh, young young kid. Uh, nice, nice mouse costume. I can't believe the I go, uh, so <laughs> I go, uh, it's, it's not a, it's not okay, but, okay. I'm <laughs> not a kid. <laughs> Usually leave them out and put them in my uh, area over here. Everybody else makes their way and, like, you. And I just, like, sigh and I just, just walk over to the guy. <laughs> I especially uh, like that because they put so much detail on this map that you can see the hinge has the door go inward. Oh, it does. <laughs> nice. Yeah, this Just is, for the this situation. Is, yeah, this isn't this isn't wizards. This is obviously by Leos, as you can see down in the bottom corner. It's, I, it's, it's one of those out. those dual directional hinges. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, this isn't a. Uh, it isn't. Um, is there an official map for the Iron Portal? Uh, they're not. No, not like this. This is actually based on the a, a one from third edition or three point five. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's the same layout, and they just they they I just like using it because it's a nice uh, nice thing. They did release a yawning portal. I, I want to say action figure play set because it's essentially what it is, but a a scaled model for minis. Uh, 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 Whiskins did. That's more true to the, the current way that it looks. But anyway, Rat King, you eventually go there, and as you guys are looking around, it's like, who is, I don't even know what this guy looks like. Uh, you eventually see Rat King kind of go over here and sit down next to Joe Lester. I, I try to do it sneakily, but he probably saw me walk over. Rat King, you got to stop just doing this in public areas. If we wanted to keep things secret, I would just have met you somewhere secret. You go, uh, but I live in the shadows, and people must know to fear the dark. Yeah, yeah. Would you like the next time we can meet in an alleyway somewhere, or just somewhere secluded at night? I go, uh, 
That would make more sense. All right, I will. I will remember that. Are these the, he, he sees the rest of you coming over. Are these the um, the group that you uh, rescued Renee yeah. Never Ember with and defeated the troll? Um, I do say before that it's like, but I just love the atmosphere. <laughs> I mean, um, it is it's go, very nice here. They it go. Uh, it's like, yep, this is them. Okay, uh, uh, welcome everybody. I am Jalester Silvermane. I work for the Lords Alliance. Hello. Yeah. Nice to no. meet. Nice to meet he's you. He's my, all. he's my man on the inside. If you catch my drift, uh, essentially oh. yes. Uh, inside of what? <laughs> you know, uh, the law. Isn't isn't that public information? <laughs> but, like I said, this isn't, I mean, we'll pass him racking for certain things that we can't quite do and to get information. He's quite reliable in certain areas, but, you know, he's not... When you don't want to get your hands, when you don't want to get your hands dirty. It, it, yes, we'll go with that. Uh, like anyway, the, I am... In, in, let the, me, let me, in the sewer. <laughs> he gives you all uh introduction. You, you each introduced yourself to him. Um, so, so, I am a... My name is Jalester Silvermane. I am a field agent for the Lord's Alliance and I report directly to Open Lord Laryl Silverhand. Frankly, I am here most of the time because adventurers are known to frequent. And we can always have a chance for adventurers for their help. That's how I met Rat King. So uh -huh. I'm looking... I, the Lord's Alliance places security of the city and really the realm ahead of our own interests. And we found that you four were quite, quite helpful, quite capable, especially not only defeating the troll, but also rescuing Renair Never Ember and his uh, associates. Word gets around. Oh, thank you. That was totally not a fluke. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. We, we really discovered a sickness in we discovered a sickness in the city that needs to be that needs to be eliminated. I, I just imagine that every single time Rat King speaks, he just face palms. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not doing a good job of it, but imagine like Batman on helium. Like that's what you're trying to. That's what he yeah. sounds like. <laughs> I figured that too. Yeah. Basically, right, like, your cobalt voice. <laughs> You sound like Batmite. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, but he continues. It's like, now, uh, we're really asking for help, but we can also uh, offer you, if you're interested, a membership in the faction. Uh, even if you don't wish to have this, your, your um, assistance would be very appreciative, and we've been uh, pay you back with Alliance's helpful. Uh, our contacts are at the city are quite helpful. Um, actually, let me look for the specific information that he can give you. You mean your superiors are okay with you uh, officially bringing in my um, my uh, unique and unofficial ways of dealing out justice? In certain areas, we're not necessarily looking for you to take down some of the bad guys, but to protect people. Really? To protect people. Take it. I love taking that down, down bad guys. I, I'm not saying you don't, but sometimes, in certain situations, protecting people is good. You protected the tavern from the troll. You protected Renair and his associate from uh, the Zentarum and apparently the Xanathar Guild at the same time. Just weird. But you've shown yourself capable in those situations, at least with your group. <clears throat> we will get you some good bad guy beatdown in due time. But we're looking to help people. We thought that you all would like to do that. Lord's Alliance can offer you um, a couple things. If, the, if you're on official Lord's Alliance duty, or perhaps if you just need a... Some free, uh, uh, free movements. We can let the local city watch in whatever area you're doing uh, know that uh, what you're doing is working for 
the Lord's Alliance. So they can look the other way, wink. Pretty much. Or at least leave you unharassed if something is weirdly happening. I I, um, I I don't suppose that you have any influence in the uh, uh, the mercantile guild. Uh, well, let me actually see something. We might have some influence there, at least through various connections. Um, look at, look at some specific things that. Uh, might be able to do. He can be vague in the, in the meantime. Yeah, okay. So he kind of says, uh, as I said, my um, my uh, I report directly to Laryl Silverhand, the one of the um, one of the Open Lords. There's like one Open Lord. I'm just trying to get some character information that I really should have had this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Laryl is the, uh, she is the open lord of Waterdeep. So she's the known, uh, like I said, I don't know the specific, all of the things about this, but you're, he basically works with the, the, the governor, the mayor, <laughs> the big mayor of the city. The known leader. He says, well, we can't necessarily bend, uh, we can pull some strings. We can't necessarily bend people's wills against that. That's not really what we want to do, but if necessary, we can. Are you looking for something specific? Uh, well, it's just that we're certainly recently in need of uh, the uh, payment of uh, a guild paperwork, essentially. Um, uh, uh, we can't perhaps wait. any grants or... or uh, I might something. be able to find you a way to get a loan. And definitely be able to skip the red tape beyond that. You'd still have to essentially pay it back. We can't just pay you the money to to do all this stuff. Uh, do course. all you need to do, however, certainly can help. But first, we need to know earn your trust, or you need to earn our trust, and we need to know that you are more than capable to do this. So, if that's such, I can give you an assignment that we do need some adventurers for. So, well, again, well, I'm more than I'm more than willing to, to help the Lord's Alliance protect the people. Oh, I, I know that, right? Yeah, I was more talking to your associates. Which, by the way, what is your group's name? By the way, I notice that your associates are not masked as you are. The name? Do you have a group name? You can put it down in the official paperwork rather than just filling out everybody's individual name. Um. Have, haven't got around to it, I guess. Uh, I'm a band name. Yeah, I'm waiting for Sharp Tooth to suggest that we're band <laughs> members now. <laughs> um. Well, I like oh. sleeping. <laughs> I'm Sleepy Spice. <laughs> 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 Which is uh, well, well, no matter. This is a rather long, um, long-winded thing. So you have plenty. Of, you'll you'll have about a ten day to, to think about it if you do. Um, so well, let me let me explain to you what I need done. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of boring work, but uh, hopefully it is to the betterment of the city or its citizens. A gang war is causing unrest throughout the city. We have offered protection to members of the Dung Sweepers Guild. And you've been assigned to protect a group of them. Or you will be assigned to protect a group of them. Meet them at Mule Skull Tavern on Ship Street in the Dock Ward. At six Guess bells. what they do! <laughs> at six bells. And guard them while they work. Do this every day for a ten day. We can, as we know it's rather boring work, we can offer you ten gold a day. As payment for this sort of thing. This assignment. So, uh, spend 10 days guarding these people. Essentially, yes. I don't know, it's an escort mission. I'm terrible at those. Uh, you won't be escorting them anywhere. They'll essentially just be doing their work, and you'll just be doing 
you'll be guarding them, making sure nothing has... No gang war would uh, uh, spill out and uh, harm these folks, as they are not part of the gangs. What? Well, I wouldn't mind helping out. Yeah. And that'll help us get closer to running our bar in. In bar. <laughs> Getting it all fixed. Well, that sounds very good. Very, very good indeed. If this is the case, then at six bells, you can head down to the dock ward and meet them. So this is like a job. It's not just like a quest. Technically, you're you're doing this for renown, and I'm just like, like I'm like, hey, you guys should get money for doing this. Okay. So yes, it right now it is a job, but it is based on protecting citizens based on assignments from people who can, uh, groups that can help you out in the future. So has the, the Dung Guild been having problems? So basically the, there's a, the gang war kind of spills into the streets, sometimes hits people that are innocent bystanders. We just <laughs> want to make sure that that doesn't happen. Or if it does, you are able to help them quick enough. In any case... So Malcy Melcy definitely wants to uh, take this opportunity to uh, observe Xanathar and the uh, Zahirim. There's no, there's no guarantee that you would see either of them or any other sort of uh, criminals as you're doing this. However, there is a chance. And if you do, feel free to well, do your vigilante justice on them. Just make sure the workers are protected. That sounds good. Okay. And we're in agreement then. And in 10 days, you will also have your group name. The Dung Protectors. I want to uh, do one I'll thing let's... before we leave the... Before, before the... Uh, before we leave. Well, while everyone's kind of leaving, I want to turn back into Mousy and ask uh, a Durnan if... Um, what it would cost to hire some adventurers to retrieve that troll carcass and get its skull, so we can put it up in our uh, our, in our tower. Okay. All right. So we'll do this. If everybody else has agreement, then you will start to leave, and then Red King will just turn back into this little thing. Uh, and I'll say you'll you'll do that easily because you don't need to do it quickly. You just need to you just be like, I'll hide in the shadows, and I'll meet you guys there. You guys head on, and then you just jump into the bathroom, change, jump out. Uh, he, he walks <laughs> underneath a table and comes out the other end. And now <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as you do that, if there are no other objections, or if nobody else wants to do anything else, um, Rat King can easily do that. As, yeah. mouse, mouse. Uh, as we're leaving, as we're leaving, Simon asks the others, uh, "What is a dun sweeper?" <laughs> You know, you know, Don. Oh, to tell you, <laughs> fade to black as they tell. <laughs> uh, we do a fade to black. It'd be so much better for a Gilligan cut. Cut. Uh, what? What is done, by the way? Cuts to the butcher near behind uh, Duranan, like chopping up some meat uh, that's slightly rotten, so it's brown, and you hear a big old. <laughs> uh. Anyway, you turn back and it's like. Ah, little mousy, uh, little little mousy brown, isn't it? Ah, uh, what can I get you? It was um, well, as you uh, might have heard, uh, me and some friends have became in possession of the Troll Skull Manor in uh, right. I don't know, like the That's business right. district where it was. Yeah, you're not and, uh, about you know, starting we're not... up, starting up competition. I mean, it is pretty far well, away. I don't think it's too much, but well. I know I can never compete with you. I mean, this is a landmark in Waterdeep, but um, you know, we figured if we have the space, might as well class up the class up the area a little bit. Um, and uh, it's called Troll Skull Manor, but ironically, there's not a Troll Skull in sight. And I know we fought a troll. My friends fought a. It's like I say, we fought a troll. I mean, my friends fought a troll uh, a few days ago here. And um, that would make the per uh, that troll skull make the perfect centerpiece on our on our wall, sort of attract 
visitors. Well, if it's still down there, you know, you could I, you know what I can tell you to do? Come back at some point uh, when we have some good adventures going down. Uh, just buy them a couple of drinks, and they'll they'll I'm sure they'll they can uh, jump on down there and send the send the troll skull back up. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll make sure that every night I'll come by. See if okay, so you'll be prospects. able to you'll be able to do that. I'll say it'll cost you um, uh, gold and a silver to pay for a. The gold is to to bring the thing back up. As it costs a gold to either go down or go on up, and a silver to just buy some adventurers some drinks. So you will be able to claim a troll skull by the next time you you head to where you need to go. So I will write that. or put it in your, either put it in your inventory or I will write down that you have a troll skull. Ah, I liked my idea more. I call the place the Spirit and Spirits. It could be both. <laughs> Nice. One control skull can be the uh, inn, and spirit and spirits can be the bar. Right, we aren't we aren't making an inn though. We basically claimed all that's the rooms. True. That's true. We don't want we don't want people in our house. With that, you are heading down to Mule Skull Tavern on Ship Street in the dock ward. So let's find Ship Street. Here it is. I could find the exact lo. You know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to find the exact location on that water deep map. There's, there's like a Google Maps type water deep map uh, that has like locations just from everything, and I'm sure that everything in this book is on there, even with just minor names. That coddling, that Astral's Way, Siren right Street. Here. Uh, a good old coddling. There we go. So you make your way over to the. Oh, every time I go into change the token, the JavaScript messes up and it gets really, really slow until I just refresh the JavaScript. I need to refresh the page. I just have to refresh the JavaScript. There we go. Luckily, I know how to do that. Being a IT, being a web developer. Cool. So head down to Mul Skull Tavern. Uh, you get there and you meet up with uh, some guys. Ah, you guys, the ones that's supposed to be uh, protecting us as we sweep the dugs? <laughs> yep, we're going to help you when you're sweeping them dugs. Ah, that's good, that's good. I like the cut of your jib. Just to, be, not, just to be, not, just to be clear, know. we're not going to help you with the dung. We're just going to make sure no one attacks you. That's fair. I know how unions work. What'd you say, Sam? Oh, I said, I'm I'm not sailing a ship right now, so I don't know what you mean. <laughs> ah, it's an old water deep expression. It means we like the cut of your jib. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so they will eventually just start sweeping the uh, various streets as you head on down. So you can position yourself. Uh, this is going to take place over the course of 10 days, and if anything happens, we'll just do it on this map. Um, Do they have so like uh, a dung free. a dung sweeping song that they sing? <laughs> okay, yeah, it's um. There once was a dung that was put to sea. And the name of the dung was the dung a dung d. I did the line. Oh, oh, like a like Mary Poppins, of like a Mary Poppins uh, window sweep, <laughs> chimney sweep kind of thing. I, it's been so long since, like, I, I know that was my favorite song in the movie, and I don't remember how it goes at all. <laughs> chim chimity, chim chimity, chim chim. Oh no, wait, that's uh, no, the, the second the one when they when everybody yeah. starts coming out. It's more, it's more upbeat. Actually, you ever you ever, you ever see uh, Mary Poppins Returns? No. They have a really good song for the for the chimney sweep for that one. Is it as good as but, uh, the Return to Oz? Oh, God. I haven't seen that. <laughs> anyway, position yourself where you might be if you were just watching these guys okay. uh, do the thing every uh, do something every I want to keep a look. I want to keep a lookout on the cruise. Rudrick okay. wants to stay close to them. Okay. <laughs> just uh, like looking over their shoulder as they're super dumb. 
It's like so. Uh, I, I think he's going to offer to help join them. One of the one of the things you know, like Bertrick says so what's your job like? And one of them's like, Oh, this is actually very interesting work. Let me get into the like the five detailed points of how to properly sweep a dung. A lot of people think you just come out here and sweep, but no, there's actually techniques and, and, and rhythms and things that you have to do to make sure it's the perfect dung sweep. And just gets into a whole conversation throughout the entire day with that one competent with that one dung sweeper. Okay. I would like uh, somebody so go ahead and give me a perception check. And Bruce Trick is like interested in the entire way. It's like I've never really considered that before. I think Rat King is the person that is mostly paying attention out of all this. So maybe they should do this. Yeah. I'm Perfect. taking this super seriously. Yeah. Not I. So perception? Uh yeah, perception. Um since I'm on the rooftops, do I get some sort of advantage? Um, I'll give you add add two to your roll. Simon is trying to pay attention to anything but them. <laughs> Sixteen. Sixteen. All right. You don't see any any sort of throughout the throughout the day. It is pretty long and boring work, but throughout the day you don't really spot anything. At one point, uh, you see a, uh, a barely conscious commoner riding slowly through the streets on a draft horse, swaying back and forth in the saddle. Starts walking down the street, sort of coming the way of the uh, the dung sweepers. Uh, now I should say that this is not uncommon. They will more just passersby will cross by as they are working. Um, but what do you do? Hey, oh, hey you, dumb sweepers at work! Walk around. Uh, what? <laughs> what? Yeah, I I leap down and I point down the other alleyway and I go detour. Make a uh, persuasion check. Uh, 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 all right. Uh, he turns his horse and just sort of goes down the other street and makes a uh, uh, goes wide, uh, makes a makes a wide girth through the things. At one point, you start does hearing. He, <laughs> does he? Uh... <laughs> uh, 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 uh. As he sort of rides into the alleyway distance. Like he's making that sound? Yep. I want to just see if I notice anything. Like he seemed drunk, but I want to see if I notice anything unusual. About him a, as he uh, well, if you're trying to see that, make a medic, make a medicine check if you're trying to see Blake is drunk or something. This doesn't seem like he's drunk, hey. but uh, you know, maybe he's just really tired. Uh, I uh, turn to Simon. I go. That man seemed unusual to you. I mean, he seemed like he had one too many, but seemed awfully happy. Uh, Simon jumps as he's spoken to from above. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, I'm on the floor. Oh, okay. Hey, Simon! Oh, let me come down there. Let's have him lean over the side of the roof. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um. I I, I I suppose I, I I wasn't really paying attention. Well, All right. He, uh, he's made his way. I, I, do you mind if I uh, do a medicine check real quick just to see if that's true? Do it. Do it with disadvantage because you weren't paying attention. Okay. Probably, yeah, just, probably attention. just had, had a long night. Has so is probably suffering from like a level of exhaustion. I'm gonna hop up on this roof this time, and I probably don't see him anymore. Uh, make a make a perception check. It'd be a really high DC, or investigation. You can do investigation too. Ten. Ah, nope, you can't. He's gone. There you go. One crisis averted. <laughs> 
Uh, with that, the first day comes to a close. Uh, six bells the next day. And if you want to do anything between days, you're free to do that. Everybody gets a long rest if you need it. You probably don't. Um, but you make it, make your way back in for the second day. I'd like somebody to make a um, another perception check. Oh, wrong button. That's a, a mouse button. You want me to keep doing it? I can, but. Let's keep doing it. Yeah, Bruce yeah. uh, yeah. will do the perception check if that's all right. Yeah, yeah we'll hot swap between each other. <laughs> it's all yeah. you want to do it. Because it could have, you can say, hey, hey, watch this thing. I'm going to the bathroom. And Rat King goes to the bathroom in the shadows. 21. The second day, it's going down different streets. Um, let's see what this is. Once again, once again, you don't seem to see anything that is, um, that is, uh, gang war related. Passersby go through by at some point during the day, however. Brutrick, you're the one who, who notices someone, someone around the corner goes, hey, psst, psst. hey, hey, big guy, big guy. Oh, which which area are they whispering from? Uh, they're just you don't have to. We're not specifically on the map right now, so we'll just say that you're at some place on a quarter. We say like you're 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 down here, and somebody just comes from behind one of these barrels. Say, hey, psst, psst, big guy. Bruchik will walk over there as naively as possible. Hello. Hey, uh, want to know if you uh got these tickets that I'm trying to get rid of. Uh, Give you a tour of the Castellanta Villa. You you would know you might know this, but uh, anybody else would know that the Castellans are a major noble group in the uh, in the city. A noble That's family. Actually. I, I'm not really into material possessions. Are you sure? Oh, you I took get a it tour. Out. It's pretty awesome. It's an awesome this awesome like like three story manor. Big courtyard. Totally on the level. Oh, I already live somewhere like that. It's enormous. Everyone even has their own bedroom where I live. Kind of kind of looks you up and down and goes like, Yeah, you don't seem like the noble cat type. Well, uh, well if that's the case, uh, no matter. Uh, thank you for your time. And, uh, uh, yeah, all right, bye. Sort of sleeps off into the shadows. I see you, Brutrick, walk back, and I say, Brutrick, who was that? Oh, there was some man offering tickets to go see somebody's house. But I told him I already lived in a really nice house. I go, sounds like a scalper, and that's illegal. <laughs> He said the word legit <laughs> on the left. Well, well, that sounds trustworthy. <laughs> Wrecking only takes down people who he knows are illegal. Yeah. Doing illegal activities. Okay. And with that, the second day comes to a close with no problem. Are we getting paid at the end of the Oh, You're gonna get paid at the end of the week, we'll say, and we'll say that okay. it's covering your your uh, uh, food expenses as well. So you get meals. Third day, who would like to make a check? I get it. <laughs> I'm looking through the maps, Mark, and in the Dragon High book, and I didn't know these were all like the simple drawn types of maps. So you <laughs> got that one out and found. Yeah, it was. Yeah, well, this one, this map I have here is a ten pack of urban maps that I just bought on yeah. Roll Twenty. Uh, but yeah, yeah before, I, like, I went yeah. and found it. This was this was right about the time when they stopped doing like big nice maps in things and just made the simple ones. Probably because it was just before everybody started doing this stuff online, and they thought, well, people don't yeah. really need all these nice maps. They're just going to draw them out on, on whiteboard anyway. Uh, in any case, well, uh, Simon, you are yeah. having. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, like the uh, essential kits was pretty new, and it had like detailed drawn maps. But then, yeah, like Avernus has like the, the 
the hand drawn maps. Yeah, it probably depends on like how much how much money they have for the uh, the uh, the stuff. And I would think that for the starters kits, they'd want nicer maps. Mm. It was cool that fans make like their own versions of it. Yeah, so it's, it's, always, it's always nice. Series, yeah. Uh, in any case, um, Simon, you get lost into a book. You start reading a book. Eventually, uh, you start feeling something rubbing against your leg. Uh, huh? Uh, I, I looks away from the book to look down. There's an orange cat sort of rubbing against you. Um, uh, hello. Um, <laughs> hisses at you. Ah, uh, good, good kitty. Make an animal handling check. Okay. Has to be the, the, I feel betrayed. It's the, probably the only the only animal he probably feels comfortable with. <laughs> you, you try to go down to pet it. And uh, it's going to try to scratch you. <laughs> Let me actually pull up a cat. Um, thing. Does a twelve hit? Uh, sadly, yes. You take <laughs> one slashing damage from his claws. He has an armor class of nine. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Squishy, squishy wizards. <laughs> It's been a while, yeah, it's been a while since we had a wizard party. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no armor, a negative dexterity. <laughs> Doing great, kid. Ah. You take one slashing damage and you probably pass out because you're a wizard. <laughs> Not that bad. Yeah. I mean, back in like <clears throat> in, in advanced D&D, like wizards started out with literally like one hit point. You were lucky to have two. Uh, their their hit dice was a D four, and yeah. if they had a low constitution, yes, they could actually earn one hit point per level. <laughs> I think the lowest you can roughly start with is probably like minus three, depending on who you take. Um, possibly a minus four. Oh, uh, so you could potentially start with two HP. Yeah, because uh, also back in the day there was still the roll three D six in order rule. Ooh, yeah, that's horrible. So I want to see this cat harassing uh, Simon, and I want to take well, out Simon. Well, hold on, hold on a sec, hold on a sec. You don't okay. automatically okay. see everyone, so go ahead and make give me a perception check with advantage. Not to not to throw off what you're doing, but you know, I don't want you to just interject into every single thing. Yes, I. Yeah, you totally yeah, see it. Right. I hear a cat because I'm Rat King. Yeah. I have to know the where every cat is. My mortal enemy. <laughs> Turns around so I know Clementine. I, I got no Clementine kid. out of four cats. So I take out Clementine and I say to her, I said, uh, get that cat away from uh, from Simon. And uh, let's see, let's see if the cat will chase Clementine. Uh, I would say even before you can do that, just because Simon's role was so level, the cat scratches and just sort of like runs off. So before you can even do anything for it, it's already gonna gonna do it. So and you look back up. It's like, oh, good job, Clementine. You didn't even need to go down there. Put it back in your pocket. It's like, wow, well, it's the most action we had in three does, days. Does Clementine also have like a little rat costume? Like, give him like little Zorro masks so people can't recognize that it's the same one as uh, Mousy's pet. Yes, when it's uh, <laughs> when he's with the Rat King, he has a little cape and a little little, uh, little bandana. <laughs> That day three comes to a close. Day four, if anybody, uh, Simon, you can get your health back as you take a long rest. Yay. <laughs> I guess you could technically take a short rest at some point just to get your one health back, but you're good. Um, with that, it is the fourth day. Who would like to give me a perception check? Sharp tooth. All right, here we go. Perception check. I'm actually not proud of that. Do you mind restarting the, the sound effects I had to refresh my I project? do, but I'll go ahead and do it anyway. So I got nine. Oh, no, I'm sorry about that. I made everything really loud. 
Yeah, for some reason the page seems to be having issues today. Uh, I've had to refresh twice now because it's frozen up on me. JavaScript will do that. JavaScript sucks. Yeah, so it's not just you that uh, that it's uh, suffering with. With a nine on sharp tooth. Yep. Uh, once again, you don't see anything coming around uh, because you're kind of like distracted, just shouting at people, being like, "Hey, hey, you want a you want a pamphlet to where I'm going to be singing next?" And it's like the same dung sweepers that you keep giving the, the pamphlets to. So it's like yeah. the fourth day in a row. Yeah. Well, it's hard to tell them apart with uh, with the uh, the robes. <laughs> uh, I will say what happens is. Uh, at some point, as they're moving down the streets, uh, you see someone, specific Sharptooth, uh, see someone uh, on a fruit crate touting uh, something. It's like, come one, come all, and get Dr. Doctor's famous cure-all for all elements. You, you over there, you with the bald spots and the liver spots and stuff and the green skin. Point at you, Sharptooth. You're the most disgusting gnome I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm just gonna like look behind him to see like who he's pointing to, because yes, it could be you, the one who just turned around. Sorry, go ahead. I'm so sorry. I was like, because he Sharp just like, well, it couldn't be me with the bald spot, the liver spots, right. green spot. So, so looking like just behind him, like there's no one back there. That's right, you. Yeah, see, you're confused as well. Maybe, maybe you need to try some of my almighty tonic. Yeah, he doesn't have a bald spot. He has a reverse mohawk. <laughs> what? What? What's this tonic you're yelling about? What is this? Well, cures all ailments, and uh, is basically the best thing since sliced bread, which was invented four years ago. I'm just gonna say right now, it's very rude to yell at people. I know, but it gets their attention, doesn't it? Ha <laughs> ha, you're a smart one, aren't you? <laughs> so what? what? Sliced bread, sliced bread really revolutionized the sandwich industry. <laughs> so what, what do you want me to do? Do you want me, you want, you, is this for free? Uh, you get to have a little trial. Here, take some of this. He takes out a little tiny vial of, uh, uh some of the colorful liquid. Um... <laughs> And says, yeah, try it. Free, huh? I don't see the problem with that. And then uh, grabs it and drinks it. Now look, everybody. Taps you on the shoulder. Look at this fine one. Give it a couple a couple moments to take effect. Turns you around so the audience can sort of see. And uh, for a minute, you don't really feel anything. And then after a little bit, you... Uh, uh, people are like, wow, it's amazing. And look, it's happening all right away. See, everybody, his green skin is kind of, is uh, completely gone. Uh, you sort of look around, and your skin is back to being a more sort of, not back to, but it says more olive colored and uh, more human skin tone than the green goblin is. What the? My yeah, beautiful see? green skin. Where did it go? It's cured. Now see who else needs here. Who else needs some more of this? And people just start coming up and start like giving them his money. I would like break down and be like, I'm a monster now. Oh my <laughs> goodness. I ain't me. I'm someone else. Oh <laughs> make boy. A, make a uh, wisdom what? saving throw at disadvantage, please. Make a it's like My mother gave me that skin. <laughs> My beautiful emerald skin. A a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Uh, wisdom. Eight. <laughs> yeah, your skin is like this. Who knows how long this is gonna last? You, kind of like you in tur shock. You turn into a hideous white person. Well, not quite <laughs> white, but still. <laughs> <laughs> The people's beauty standards. Put out of me. It's the problem it's ever been. I'll never trust modern medicine again. <laughs> That's a fact. After a little bit, the um, uh, the crowd sort of dies down, and you're just sitting there, like crying the entire time. And you know, eventually, after that, he comes in. Oh, look, look, look! No matter here. Taps you, um, taps you on the shoulder a bit. 
and uh, you look at your skin and it turns back to being green. Uh, just put a little illusion magic on you just to, to help slow the thing. Don't, don't want to hurt anybody, but uh, feel free to keep this quiet. Uh, he passes you a single uh, gold piece from his. Uh, well, no, he'll give you he'll give you a, a silver piece um, okay. from his uh, profits. And then, as soon as he sees the money, he's gonna be like, "Worth it." <laughs> Actually, no, he will give you a gold piece. So take take a gold piece instead, because he stole those for pretty pretty well. Then he's just silver, and he's like, "I don't know. I'm feeling pretty distraught." <laughs> <laughs> Do you just take a sharp tooth, the gold piece? Yeah, I'll just take the the gold piece. Right, you can add that to your uh, to your inventory. All right. Into your currency. With that, you continue for the fourth day without incident. Moving, moving on to the fifth day. Who wants to? He's back to Mousy. Yep. Back to Mousy. Go ahead. Back. You can do. Mousy can do with advantage because you are on rooftops and stuff. So. I'll do, and I'll do it this time. <laughs> and before you gave plus plus two, so seventeen. Oh, that's right. It was plus two. So yeah, you got a seventeen. Yep. Um, let me. I need to check something. Are, they, are these like done super doing a good job? Like, are they doing their oh, job they well? Oh, they seem to be. Yeah, they're doing their job right. Yeah, definitely. They're they're the kind of like blue collar worker that knows what they're doing because they've like, been doing it for so long. So, I said I say to them, you guys, you guys are the real heroes. <laughs> oh, thanks. That means a lot. It means yeah. a lot coming from you, a, a, a short halfling in a uh, a rat costume. But thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Tinge of so uh, sarcasm on Emma's voice. They don't know who he is. <laughs> oh, this is this is great. Um, so I'm basically I'm basically also rolling on my big encounter thing, and I'm using that as either I'm either I'm running it or I'm using it as inspiration for what to do. And I'm gonna do something right. that, based on what I rolled, but isn't one of the things. Uh, Racking at one point, you you head on down towards the thing to get a better look at something. It's like, <gasps> hey. I know you. You're Mousy Brown. You're the reporter for. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You're not Mousy Brown. You're got the same height and the mouse ears. And I, I'm sorry. I miss it. He's he's a famous reporter from. He's got a broadsheet and I really like his stuff. Um, uh, sorry, that, I didn't mean to. This? Some some kid comes up, some or some young some person comes up and is saying it to you, a like youth? a commoner. A youth. Um, he goes uh I get that a lot. Oddly enough. <laughs> um, yeah. so, so you're a fan of Mousy Brown? A fan of Mousy Brown, you say? Fan of his newspaper, but yeah, he's a, he's a fantastic writer. You know, he, he he tells the stories about the common person. Folks like these fine folks behind me clean the streets. I know. Ooh, you think there's going to be something in there about uh, them soon? Love to read about it. Um, well, since, uh, usually, you know, he comes to me for his inspiration, and, uh, I've been protecting these fine citizens for the past five days. Make a deception um, check with, uh, I'll say with advantage, because it's mostly, mostly true and you're just really good at keeping your identity. Deception? Deception. Because you are deceiving people by doing this. Oh no, oh no. No. Mousy Brown no, working. What? I said I was gonna pick the background where like you can't tell it's me, but uh, I didn't uh, think that'd be fun. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have somebody uncover your identity, so don't worry about that. But I'm just like No, no. Mousy Brown writes about the the commoners, the blue collars, the people around the city. You're just some you're just some masked person. You're not just one of the. You're no, 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 no. I I don't like this dishonesty. And he's just kind of like <laughs> angry, like just backs up and is like, hey, "You have a good day, sir," and just kind of angrily just sort of. Leaves. I said, I said, but check out the newest issue where we talk about taking down a troll. Late, I, back. I check oh. out every issue, and he just walks off. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, while you're distracted, uh, four dung sweepers have been killed. 
In gang related. Oh. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's too bad. <laughs> you know, uh, Mousy has been to the best of his ability trying to keep up with his broadsheet responsibilities. Yes. Um, and he, he, you know, he writes about the common man, but also about uh, hero work at the Yawning Portal. If he gets, tries to right. interview um, adventurers. I'm so. not. I'm not saying that. Uh, so what I did, I just had you roll against the deception, and I played into. I know. I know, that, Mark. Yeah. I know, Mark. I know. Okay, it just sounded like you might not have. All right. Either way, day five comes to an end with a. Uh, with no, no, nothing else. Going on to day six. Who shall be looking? Fruit trick. Fruit trick time. It's a. Uh, perception? Yeah. Perception. Nine. <laughs> Amazing. Six. Oh, six. I'm sorry. I don't have my glasses on. Uh, well, how am I going to do that? Yeah. <laughs> As you all head on, keep following with this from the city. You don't see anything much. much you check all of the alleyways beforehand to make sure there's nothing going on, and just stick close to the uh, dung sweepers. At some point, uh, somebody, one of the one of the uh, dung sweepers, goes down the uh, alleyway that Prutrick looked down and says, "Ah, oh, oh no, what's that? What's that?" Uh, Bertrand, can I have you roll a D a D six, please? Absolutely. Two. Two. Oh, this. Oh, that's horrible. Uh, <coughs> oh, God. You hear the um, the dung sweeper sure do it. The dung sweeper is pretty immune to just horrible trash and crap smells and cleaning up, you know, chamber pots and whatnot. Uh, so this is on... This is weird. Uh, Brutrick will uh, immediately charge down there and say, Don't worry, I'm here to help. Um, uh, more to can, alert the dung sweeper than to alert his own team. Yes, you can You can also start smelling this, and it's coming over from a couple of barrels in, the, in a quarter... Corner of the alley. The end of the. Are alley we close way. to the? Uh, are we close to the fantasy Chipotle? <laughs> Not quite. But yes, you smell smell of rotting meat coming from a uh, just a barrel, some barrels at the end of the alleyway. Oh, fantasy Taco Bell. <laughs> but you, Patrick. Talk to the dung sweeper. Are you okay? Yeah, it's, oh, what is, it's horrible. Oh, God, the smell. I find myself quite immune to the horrible smells of this world, but, whew, this is, I'm not used to this one. Yeah, I mean, it's been the same barrels in the sun for at least five days, if not more. This is in an alleyway, so it's pretty, like, it might be warm, but it is, it is autumn, and it is in the, not in direct sunlight, because it is in a thin alley. Uh -huh. Maybe we should pop the lid and take a look. We don't want anyone getting sick if this is meant to feed people. Uh, make a persuasion check. Thirteen. Thirteen. It's like, ah, guess you're right. Here, take a big breath. <gasps> Head on over. Can you help him uncover the barrel? Inside the barrel is the corpse of a young male dwarf. Oh no! Oh, oh, that explains it. Oh, oh god. Uh, let me, I gotta talk to my foreman. Um, Richard runs out and says, Rat King, Rat King, Rat King, Rat King! <laughs> Help! <laughs> I go, the rat signal. And I jump down. <laughs> it's like, excited for some action, but I go, yeah. what's easy the problem? I go, oh god! <laughs> I just we all smelled something wrong and the dung sweeper said that something smelled wrong so you know that it really smelled wrong 
Yeah, and then we just I, I, yeah. They say like, okay, stay calm. No, stay calm. He's not necessarily Ooh. used to the situation, but um, he goes, uh, let's just uh, take things slow. And I, um, I motion over to Simon and Sharptooth. But I say, uh, what, um, I know Simon probably couldn't handle it, so I asked Sharptooth to come help, and I say, Simon, keep a, see, keep a lookout. Well, no, well, Simon, a situation the, here. The, uh, okay. the, dunk sweepers, the dunk sweeper who's there also just goes like, well, hold, what are you doing? We should just go, go to the city watch. There you go. Go on good time. Uh, uh, okay, I guess. I don't even have your roll on that. I'll just trust. You'll just trust you. I just want to uh, see if I notice any um, any visible markings, like he, if he's branded like the uh, with the, either the make flying a, serpent or the. Make an investigation check. Like this is what we're hired for. I think you were hired to to make sure that we didn't get hurt, but okay. <laughs> Uh, you don't find any uh, any noticeable tattoos. At least none that would tie okay. him to any of the known. Um, you know, definitely don't see the Zentarum on him. You don't see the uh, Santa Guilds on him. Should, should we go? Like, what are you what are you thinking during all this? Who? Right. Rick Trick, what are you what are you thinking about? This is really unfortunate. I really didn't expect to see a dead body in a barrel today. But um, I'm, I guess I'm just worried that somebody murdered him and hit him in a barrel. You know, um, you know, yes, yes, that makes sense. You know, well, it was our job to protect the the workers, not to solve crimes. As much as it pains me. <laughs> I can take up more slack on protecting the dung sweepers if you want to keep investigating. Or yeah. should we just call the city watch? I think I, if I this was any other a, couple of the, a couple of the dung sweepers are kind of like at the end of the alley just like watching what you guys are doing. Yeah, it says, if this is any other situation, um, I may take up the investigation myself, but this is a job for the local authorities. Okay. And, uh... You can very easily find a... You'll know where the local City Watch office is. You'll be able to alert them for it. Uh, the area is cordoned off. Um, everybody kind of gives a, uh, a statement and some information. Um, they, uh, they pretty much ha start handling it themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I say the one of the guards, like... Was there like, anything about the dwarf? What's that? Was there, there was, like, nothing identifying, like, an employee, clothing, or a nothing guild? That, um, nothing that Rat King found. Okay. I want to say to one of the guards, it's, I'm saying, like, we're here on a... We were hired by the Lord's Alliance. And one of the workers came across this body and we were specifically asked to be on the lookout for gang violence. Do you think this might be related, officer? There's always a chance that it be related. Somebody gets a bad debt. doesn't look like it's related to any of the gang war. But somebody could have owed money. Somebody could have just crossed the wrong person. Uh, who knows? We'll have to let our investigators figure this out. Uh, did he end up noticing um, any uh, like cause of death? Um, looking over, it looks like the talking to the uh, the, the officers there. It's, it looks like the dwarf was strangled. They have such thick necks. <laughs> is that is that dwarfist? I don't know if that's dwarfist or not. <laughs> Because <laughs> you're so stout. 
And with that, if nobody else has anything else, they can. Uh, the day comes to an end. Um, at some point, I want to slip out and come back as Mousy, and uh, ask, saying like I'm a writer for the knee deep and water deep, and I want to uh, write a memoriam about this man. Do you have any? Do you know his identity? Uh, no idea. Still trying to get that. We'll let you know. Uh... We'll put out a, uh, we have to identify his next of kin first anyway. The laws are. Like, uh, before the day ends, Sharptooth wants to walk by Mousy and be like, Where's Rat King? <laughs> oh, he had, uh, he had a. Way we should be <laughs> you know, it's getting late. He had, he had to hurry home. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, let's, let's rat back wife to the... before the rat wife finished making dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Said, but hey, uh, let's go over to the to the, the tavern. Drinks on me. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> to right who? Let's go. <laughs> uh, do you actually go drinking afterwards? I, I, I imagine. Uh, yeah, I imagine we've been so worn out like, after experience like this. Like, let's get let's yeah. uh. Get our mind on other things. Let's head back to the yawning portal. Maybe we'll get up. Like, if that's the case, I would like uh, Mousy uh, remove one silver from your currency. As you said, everybody, you were going to buy drinks for everybody. And I would like everybody who would be drinking uh, alcohol to make a constitution saving throw. Mm -hmm. It's ten, 10 silver to a gold, right? Yes. We're just, so, just, just with the strawberry milk. Okay, so you won't be having alcohol. You'll just have milk. You'll be fine. Simon, do you have a nice glass of wine, or do you stick with water? Uh, he will probably be um, uh, persuaded into having a mead. Okay, I'd like you to do this with this. Is this going to be your first mead? Yes. And I would like you to roll with a, a Constitution saving throw with disadvantage. Mousy, you you too, please. Uh, normal roll for Mousy. Sh Sharp tooth got a nat twenty. Yep, you're good. Eleven. Okay. Um, Mousy. Joe, you there? All right, let's go with the with the uh, money. Oh, no problem. Probably one silver. Fourteen. All right. None of you. Uh, uh, really wake up with a hangover at all. Simon, you do for a while, but it does subside after a little bit, as you just had one, maybe half a mead. You know, in a, in a kid's glass with a sippy cup. So, nobody is poisoned for this day with a hangover. <laughs> with that, we move on to day number seven. I'll get it. He was drinking the equivalent of gasoline and it didn't bother him. <laughs> I roll above ten, uh, above nine. Wow. Nice. Yeah, you're really, really perceptive. You're like, oh, after that cat, I'm not dropping my eyes all day. Let's see what comes up. I am so glad I got this book because it has so much extra crap to do. Uh, as you were going through, uh, coming through one alley is a group of, uh, a group of, um, uh, we'll say a couple of kobolds actually come up. Uh, and as they pass by, Simon's like, hey, hey, uh, uh, mister, um, do you know, uh, uh, any, any place we could just find a, a nice safe place to rest? Uh, well, um, uh, uh, no, no, actually, I, I'm still quite new to the city and, uh, haven't exactly uh -huh. explored it very well. So you don't know any 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 safe place at all? Uh, well, uh, he considers saying the yawning portal, but um, with so many adventures around and them being kobolds, that might not be the best idea. Um, uh, 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 Bracewaith uh, calls over to um. Try to get some suggestions. Sharp tooth? Yeah. 
Uh, as Simon's calling you over to uh, ask I might be... Oh, usually Sharptooth would just say something as he got over there. Just surprised he didn't. <laughs> oh. No, uh, no, just... no, no. <laughs> Uh, the, the, uh, these uh, uh, charming little fellows uh, are looking for a place to stay. Uh, do, do you know of any suggestions? Uh, I guess Sam doesn't know of any place, but, but Shark Shark may. Uh, make a uh, history check with advantage. Let's go roll one more time. Ace. Six. Go ahead and roll one more time with advantage. Okay. That is a... These poor little souls. You start listing off every, like, uh, place that your band has played. Mm -hmm. And they're all, like, really, like, dangerous taverns. And you're like, oh, no, we... Yeah, you can go to the, uh... No, wait, that's where those two guys got into a really big fight and decapitated each other. At the same time, it was awesome. Best night of... Best night of, uh... Music I ever had. It was no, like pyrotechnic. No, it was blood. <laughs> <laughs> it was all like. Oh, where is my where's my thing? They all have to have chicken wire in front of the stage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's that's sharp tooth helping. Yeah. It's all like that. <laughs> What's that? It's like oh, uh, 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 thank you. I think we'll um. I think we'll just continue asking around ourselves. Come on, everybody. There's maybe maybe you know, half a dozen of them, give or take. They just sort of head off in the other direction. Good luck. Fine, go to the touristy places. You ain't going to get the culture if you go there. And then wander <laughs> back over. Uh, give me one moment. i got to plug in my Bluetooth headset. <laughs> I heard a beep, and I have since realized that those weird beeps are for... That it's running low on battery. There we go. Can we? Uh, somebody say something. Uh, in fact, your your quality has improved. There we go. Uh, hold on. Uh, say something. Something. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, my was my quality crap. Let me. Uh... Uh, no, no. It's just uh, you're a little more clearer now. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe it always tries to pick up other things. Let me make sure that I'm on the correct microphone. It's, it's, it gets kind of... Oh, no, it's, that's why it's using... Plug it in. Loose. Sound good? Uh, you haven't said anything yet. But then how did... Oh. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Blah, 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 blah. How's that? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. And with that, I'm going to restart the music because I didn't hear it. There you go. With that, day seven comes to a close with no nothing else happening. Day eight, who's up? I think uh, Sharptooth's turn. Perfect. A natural 20. 22. I don't... For no... I can't even think of, like, an in-character reason why. It's going to be he happens you to just, be looking the right you decide, way. You decide to get... you just Yeah, pretty much it's luck, as, as well as you decide to just get up and start shouting like it's your shout tower. You missed your shouting tower. So you just start going yeah. into the, the highest point and where everybody is and start shouting. So you have a good view of everybody. Uh, he started to bring uh, his uh, bass guitar uh, and just starts <laughs> in practices uh, while doing this. <laughs> Probably, yes. Uh, at one point down the street, you'd see uh, four city guards on horseback escorting an armored carriage through the ward. Whoa! That looks serious. Kind of looks like it's right up Rat King's alley. Almost said mousy there, which would have been completely incorrect. <laughs> so Sharptooth's going to wander over to wherever the Rat King is at this point. Like, I guess showed up onto the roof where he usually stands. Oh, let me do that. So you're probably, you're probably, you're probably on, the, on the roof next to 
next near Rat King, and so you can easily make your way over there. Yeah. Just like okay, scramble up. <laughs> so he said it was like it was like it was like an armored carriage. Yeah. Yes. That looks so like something recognize... you're interested in. Uh, you would yeah. probably know this is well, likely I... some sort of like armored car type situation where it probably has either like you know bank money in it or possibly a tax collector or. I was about to say, is it like trans? Is it transporting gold? Uh, make a uh, make a perception or investigation check as you're trying to identify what kind of thing this is. Can uh, Sharptooth also do that? Yeah, go, each of you go ahead and do it. Wasting your rat 20s. Uh, yep. Mousy, your rat king is basically able to determine what kind of thing it is, and Sharptooth is like, oh yeah, there's a thing that says official tax collector on the side there. So, and that thing to avoid at all costs. <laughs> So it's yeah. it's likely uh, if if it's being honest, it is likely a, uh, a noble's ta a tax collector. Sorry, um, being transported through the ward. How are taxes in this area? Is it pretty fair? Or uh, this is the castle or... ward, so it's probably it's probably a little higher because it's a nicer sort of area. But I thought usually the the higher costing places ended up paying less. And... What six? They're they're property taxes. Can't really escape those. <laughs> but like, to my knowledge, they're not crooked or anything. They're just uh, it's, it's more bureaucratic crookedness, but it's not Robin Hood. Yeah. You you wouldn't be doing a Robin Hood situation here. The the money does. The money is fair in the sense that it is being used for whatever. It's not unless somebody's embezzling it. Um, they're not. They're not. Uh, the, these are the the law abiding, um, the law based taxes. So, yeah, it's not a king. I say, the, I say a sharp tooth. Like even the rich must pay their dues. I haven't registered my taxes in thirty years. <laughs> Good, because I don't have to be on jury I... duty either. <laughs> I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> then why not just like scurry back down? <laughs> that day eight comes to a close. Day nine. I think we're back to Rat King. Shit. Uh, nine. nine. Distracted. You rolled my dice. <laughs> uh, with that, you are looking around. You're like, trouble's coming. I can just feel it. I can just feel it. And then all of a sudden, behind you, maybe maybe on the other side of the street that you're on, you hear. Um, so you're probably like up here or something, looking around. Uh. You hear somebody going, some screams and people going, "Oh my God, what's that? Oh, look out!" Uh, and then coming down, straight up, coming towards where Grutrick is, is this horrible thing. If I can figure out how, to, there's the layer. This horrible thing just crawling on the ground, <laughs> huge, sort of towards Grutrick. Not necessarily like aiming towards Grutrick, but just coming down from that area. On top of that, it's being, it's being um, chased by two guards that are kind of shouting, Look out, everyone! It's escaped! It's come up from the sewers! Be careful! We, we will take care of it! I was going to yeah. say, before you put the token up, was, uh, that's a rude thing to say. It's it, it's it's just sharp tooth. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'd like everybody to roll initiative. Click, Does... Remember to click on your token first. Or actually, it's probably not going to matter that much, but... Ah, uh, natural one. <laughs> oh, wait, a two, because I've got a negative one. <laughs> it, it is also kind of... It's always kind of sad when you get an unnatural one. God, sorry. I could have saw that you rolled. Um, forget how to put the music on. Boop.
Let's do a good old-fashioned rat battle. And with that, Brutrick, you see this horrible, horrible thing coming up. Um, it looks like it looks like a, a giant side of centipede with like these big tentacle arm, like like tentacles on its face, and uh, oh. it's horrible. Uh, Brutrick would like to uh, in engage in battle to defend the. Uh, the dung sweepers, so he's got to stop it before he gets to the dung sweepers. Okay. So I'm going to do in a... The poor, innocent dung sweepers. <laughs> the little dung babies. <laughs> Arm attack. Seven does not hit as you come up with this thing. Well, first off, you have to move up to it, so... I assume you move there? Yes, yeah. Okay. Okie doke. And then I do my bonus action unarmed attack. Go for it. Uh, 12 will also miss. Just miss as you try to get this. This thing is really disgusting. You're like, ugh, I, I, I don't know if I should touch it or not. Eh. Eh. And you kind of miss it with your two two attacks. Couldn't bring myself to I thought unarmed. I thought unarmed strut, um... The unarmed strike for your bonus attack, you had to hit with the first one. Is that not the rule? No, no, you just have to attack. Yeah. Because it's just about bonus action thing. Okay. Anything else? No, that's the end of my turn. I'll be like, oh no. Yeah, I will say this thing does. It, it looks like it's got uh, greased over hair, but the hair is tentacles. <laughs> now I see. Well, it. Actually, actually, Brutrick wasn't supposed to be up, so we will skip you when we get to your turn. But we'll say that you saw it first, Randall. Right? The guards, I'll say, are just pursuing this thing and basically get to where they're supposed to be at this point. Uh, the commoners don't know what to do. It's like, oh, what are they? Let's go. Yeah, just get back to work. Sharp Tooth, you're up. Uh, I guess I'm gonna, with the thought of lost money, mm. I'm so far. I'm gonna start uh, moving. Uh, I guess one second. it's thirty. Thirty feet in each square is five feet. Yeah, so I'm gonna move thirty feet. More over this way to where the commotion is, because I just don't want to lose uh, the mm -hmm. chance of getting the gold. What's all the commotion here? What's going on? Let's say you can get a glimpse of just the edge of Brutrick fighting something. Is he fighting a giant person? Who knows? But he's fighting something. Ah, jeez. Anything else? That is the end of my... Oh, wait, I'm going to... You can, you can dash if you want to get closer, you can do another door action, or you can do any of your other basic actions. I think uh, I'd like to do Bardic Inspiration to... Uh... We're, all, we're all inspired. <laughs> I, will, I won't do uh, dash. They're, they're different things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those are different. Okay, so Brutic doesn't have uh, a Bardic Inspiration on yeah, yet. You, you have, so there's two things, let me explain this. So normal Inspiration is what I give, and you can give to other players, and that gives you an advantage on a roll, or access if you had advantage on a roll. Bardic Inspiration gives you a, a, a an extra dice roll after you roll a d20, or and before you find out if the thing works or not. Uh, it's based on uh, whatever the Bard's level is. So I'd like to use one um, on Brutrick. Brutrick is inspired. And that's the end of my turn. <laughs> you just sing a really epic version of the Dunk Super song. <laughs> Everyone popped up. You've been working on it all week. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you, guys, you guys need more material. We're gonna skip root trick because you went first technically. So uh, we'll just pre we'll pretend that you have them gone right now. Rat King, you are up. Why? Do some sort of roll to see what this is. Uh, yeah. Go make a uh, nature check. 16. This appears to be a carrion crawler. Probably came up from like the sewers or or the underdark or something, some way from, from getting through from the underground. They're basically giant, uh, like slimy predators. Can I see it from where I am since I have high yeah. ground? Yeah, you can see it. And since I'm so far away, it'll be a disadvantage if I attack, right? 
It depends on the attack. What do, what are you what are you shooting with? Um, crossbow. My uh, crossbow. What kind of crossbow? Hand crossbow. Hand crossbow. Hand 30 crossbow is 31, 31, 20. So yes, you would be at disadvantage uh, beyond thirty feet. How do you do jumping rules? Can I jump to the other? The other. Uh, Let me look up the specifics. Uh, when you make so, if you make a long jump, you can jump a number of feet up to your strength score. If you move at least ten feet uh, on foot immediately before the jump. So, what is your strength score? Minus one. Not the modifier, the score. Nine. Nine. So you'll be able to jump nine feet, and it looks like the closest gap is about twelve. Fair enough. So, unfortunately, you would not be able to do it. So I'm just gonna make an attack disadvantage. Okay. Let's roll, roll it once. Natural one. Doesn't meter. Well, it's not going to get worse than that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it goes wide and just hits, uh, basically hits this crane in the middle. It doesn't go wide, but it hits the crane in the middle, uh, just blocking the way. At least you didn't peg Brutrick. Yeah, I don't I don't generally like doing that with nat ones. Nice. Jump down. Okay. Uh make a make a dex an acrobatics check with advantage, as you were used to doing this parkour. Yeah, you you're able you get down no problem, you land on your feet. Keep going. Right, anything else? Okay. The carry-on crawler just sees Brute Trick instead and is going to make a, a attack with its tentacles on Brute Trick. Does a 10 hit? That does not hit. Does not hit, and it's going to attempt to bite you as well. Just bring its mouth in as the tentacles are blocked. And a 9 does not hit. And right. seeing itself sort of cornered, it is going to start climbing up this way, uh, going up to the top of the roofs, going up about uh, 10 feet, and then getting to maybe about here. And it's currently on top of the roof, ah. which is oh. about 15 feet up. Uh, Brutrick, you can take an attack of opportunity if you wish. I would love to. Go for it. And so attack of opportunity... Any melee attack based on what weapons you are holding or are able to do. Uh, obviously, an unarmed strike can be done by anybody, uh, but if you were holding a weapon, uh, you could use that. So I'm just curious if I could use the bonus action afterwards, or is it just... No, because this is just... This isn't an action or anything like that. You're, it's not your turn. You're just... A re able reaction. To, it's a reaction. Yes, thank you. Okay, so I am going to... Look at Joey out DMing me. I'm so proud. <laughs> Sorry, I know. I get no, no, kind no, of no, irritated you're... when you when you DM for me, so I don't want to do the same to you. But... No, it's completely it's completely fine. It's just it's the rule side of me. So it's like, yeah, if I I, I like to be clarification. So go ahead and make an attack roll. Yeah, just an unarmed strike. Well, this is educational for them as well. Yes. Fourteen will hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, four damage but you do manage to connect and its turn is over moving on Simon you tell us how squishy is it uh it's 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 nice and slimy like think of it as like a giant slug with like more blubbery sort of sort of uh skin or whatever nice uh, <laughs> you, you just had to stop at slug <laughs> You had, you had me in slug. <laughs> uh, Simon is going to uh, to jump um, because uh, when the Rat King lands beside him, because he was busy reading a book with his number one, uh, uh, finally notices what's going on, panics, uh, hides behind some crates, uh, and uh, does the only thing that he can think of that might actually hurt it and cast magic missile. 
Okay, yeah. go ahead and roll. Uh, so That's the, uh, to... yeah, yeah, another one. rules lawyer, but is he able to see him? He would be able to see him uh, as he moves over there. It's not going to be a problem. Like this, yeah. I know this tower's in a way, but like he could, he could just like run this way or run over here first. Sure. It, then, it's also a large, so it's probably taller than it as well. Yeah, and magic missile is an auto hit, so you can either you can yeah. e I can either triple that or you can roll two more times. Uh, it's up to you how you prefer to do it. Oh, that's right, I forgot. There's multiple ones. Yeah, so it's you get three uh, with a level one magic missile. Uh, yeah. So you get a total of uh, seven. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, seven. Yeah. This is all hit. Is what's out of So so I land down. Simon screams. And I go and I grab his hand. They go magic missile, and I point his finger to the carry crawler. He's like, so he's like, what's going on? And he fires the missile. <laughs> hey, I do magic he, at it. He yeah, do magic. Uh, he takes his iron back. He's like, no, I'm gonna hide. And he hides and hits Burns magic missile as he does it. <laughs> I can't solve it with the stars. <laughs> it cocks his sleeve like <laughs> a shotgun. The guards go over. I was like, oh, oh no, citizens, citizens, we'll take care of this. As they sort of move over, um, and they're gonna try to. Uh, I was like, oh, I, I, ah, they're gonna both try I to throw their the spear, uh, spear at. Uh, at it. The first one hits for 4 damage. The second one hits for 6 damage, doing a total of 10 damage to this. They are now both spearless. Why did we do that? Oh, God. Oh, dang it! Uh, I don't I'm, need I'm, help. I have knives. I'm <laughs> out of knives. <laughs> uh, with that, the guards are done. Commoners are like... Say, what? They can sort of see some of this. Go ahead. Yes, sorry. Uh, it was, uh, it's like, don't worry, comrades. We were hired by the Lord's Alliance. We will join you in battle. Oh, great. Uh, get our spears back. At this point, the commoners sort of see this thing. It's like, oh, God, that's horrible. Here, uh, protectors, protect us. And they all sort of just <laughs> huddle uh, sort of out of the way. So. It's like, oh, it's disgusting. Yeah. So they can sort of see it peeking over the, uh, the top of the roofs. Sharptooth, you are now up. Seeing that it's uh, coming over the roofs, I think I'm going to double back to 1, 2, 3, 20 feet, 15 feet, uh, to try and get in between the uh, creature and the counters. Yeah, the, the guy. Dumb sweepers, the dumb sweepers. I, from this angle, because it's still like it's past the peak of the roof. Do you think I would be able to try shooting a crossbow at it? I'll Just... give you it with the uh, three quarters cover, so it's going to get a plus five to its AC. So you can okay. still do it. Do a parabola, just shoot it straight up so it lands straight down yeah. on it. Yeah, sharp tooth, mad. Just like, a, just like a freaking Final Fantasy Tactics. Yep. So I played Vandal Hearts, which was uh, a different. The okay, first so... superior game. <laughs> An 11 does not hit with its massive plus 5 DC. Yeah, all right. Like, I got it, and your 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 arrow is now stuck on the roof. You're like, hey, somebody go get that for me. Get a big stick. We'll get it down. <laughs> Just shooting it with another crossbow. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, uh, I think I'm going to dash closer to... Um, the guys, I guess... Uh, can I go 10 feet with dash? Yeah, I think it'll be fine. You, you, you can continue moving because you have a total of 50, uh, 30 feet of movement. So, yeah, yeah you can get there. Can't, you can't dash because that replaces your uh, Okay, so your I will attack, continue. Basically. Yeah, correct. You, you you still had movement left as you, you can move, yeah. you can split your movement up uh, on your, through whatever you do on your turn. Okay, awesome. So that's my turn is okay. getting... Brute trick. Carrying Crawler has crawled up onto the roofs. Bertrick would like to do some uh, athletics and uh, do flips up after it onto the roof. And it's okay. Active. I'll say that. Go ahead and make a uh, acrobatics check. It's not going to be that difficult for you. Yeah, you're able to get up there, and you're able to climb up using your speed. Uh, twice your speed to get uh, wherever you want it to be right next to the carrying crawler. So feel free to move yourself where you'd like to be. 
And then uh, continue your turn. Here. Oh, you want to get all the way up there. Uh, it's going to it's gonna cost you at least 20 feet to get up the thing because you don't have a, a climb speed, but you are you do it without falling. So you have to be on this side of it or, or someplace that you can get to within 10 feet of uh, the ground. So, yeah, that, yeah. that's fun. Um, I'll say... I'll say you can get right there. Uh, so Brutrick is going to uh, trying to knock it off. Okay. Uh, I see. The guards. <laughs> okay. So it'll be it'll a... be athletics roll. It rolled a natural one. <gasps> And you were able to push this five feet. I'm going to have it make a... Because it's in this... You know what? I'm going to straight up give it to you. I'm going to go, go ahead and uh, it's going to take one, one ten feet worth of damage. It's full six bludgeoning damage. At least it didn't fall on the guard. And it is now right next to the guard that has no weapons. <laughs> but isn't the spear in it so it could possibly grab the spear out of it? Potentially, uh, this also did land prone. Oh, I believe that'd be the end of my turn. Okay, Rat King, you're up. Can't hear you. I'm not talking. Right. Okay, right, so, so I run up. It's on the ground now. It is prone on the ground. Yes. Okay, so I was gonna probably do the same thing, um, but I'm going to crossbow. It'll be disadvantaged because it's prone. I thought if it's prone, it's advantage. It's if it's melee, if it's ranged, it's a smaller target, so it's disadvantaged. It's a giant worm, Mark. I know, but <laughs> rules is written. <laughs> Oh, I don't know 20. if you rolled a 46. Because you have a 2d20 K1, KL1. Well, I hit, hit the hit. That was full twice. <laughs> uh, I see what it was doing. You, It did roll 2d20s, though. I think it added it together. I don't know what it, happened. It did, but you um, did roll. I will give you the dot because it looks like you rolled two d20s. So you rolled a natural 20. <laughs> so I do it twice. 15 damage. Like, usually when I press um, control with this disadvantage, but then it brings up this whole other menu asking me all this yeah. stuff, so I think it messed me up somehow. Yeah, so you, yeah, you definitely rolled two natural 20s, because I just did the same kind of roll, and it did roll me two different numbers, so. Yeah, I saw it on my screen. Um, I rolled yeah. 15 damage total. Uh, nicely done. Oh, you know, <laughs> rolling a, a max and a min, so, but you do 15 damage. This thing is looking really hurt. Double mat 20 on disadvantage. Nicely. Nicely luck. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, that's it. I, I uh, well, I yell at the guards to watch out. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> it's raining carrier crawlers! With that, he is going to stand up and just basically attack this guard right in front of him. As it is confused and hurt. Uh, does an 11 hit the guard? It does not. And it's going to attempt to bite him. The 12 also does not. And he's sort of, I'm going to say he's hes there, but he's going to hes going to crawl back up onto the roof. And the guard is going to get an attack of opportunity, which is an unarmed strike. How do you think he is? A wizard? <laughs> Matt, well, he hits with a, with a dirty 20, dealing um, two damage to it. Not enough to kill it, though. But enough to make him want to uh, wash his hands. Yes. 
Like, ew, I touched it. Simon, you're up. Oh, you're, you're, you're hiding, so all you hear is a bunch of squishes. I, like, I, he's Jello peeking sacks. over the barrel. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> you just see a pair of glasses and a hat. <laughs> um, I'll say you can see part of him um, based on where perspective right now. Just out of range of that one. So, um, all right, he will. I uh, can't cast the only other uh, attack spell that I have, so Sweet. I will do another magic missile. All right, go ahead and roll me four. A uh, four? Four, four, four. Uh, you roll three, but you rolled a four, so you roll a total of twelve, which is more than enough to kill it. First one hits, the second one hits, and you hear it plop on the ground again. Dead. The third missile goes wide. How does your third missile react now that the carrying crawler is dead? Uh, it, it just flur it, it uh, just kind of twirls around in the air for a bit and then just uh, 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 hits it when it uh, when it lands on the ground with a little plunk. Simon has killed his first thing. We are out of initiative. And he wasn't even looking. <laughs> uh, Brutrix going to grab Sharptooth's arrow for him. <laughs> oh, pull the spears out. Pull the spears out. Give them back to the, the guards. Uh, thank you, citizen. I say, uh, it's like, what happened? How'd this uh, thing escape? This thing apparently came up from the uh, local sewer. That's uh, the known to happen, Arizona. But uh, uh, thankfully, we were here, as well as all of you very brave citizens, to take this down. Good work. A uh, roof trick comes down off the roof and says, Rat King, I can see why you're always up on the roofs. It's very convenient. <laughs> it's cool, huh? Yeah. The carry crawler falls down off the roof next to you. Finally, slides off. <laughs> no, it's already on the ground. You're right. Never mind. <laughs> uh, is it dead yet? Uh, yes, citizen, it's dead. Oh, good. Good job, everybody. We will recommend you. What What are your names? Do you have a group name of some sort? Um, and it's kind of saying, well, are, are we, like, done-related? I don't know. Uh, no matter. Say we're, uh... Yeah, saying, like, we're, uh... We're working on that. Okay, well, you should get one. Brandy, we'll carry this to where it needs to go. Doop, 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 doop. Everything mm -hmm. goes back to normal. The rest of the day, no other ha things happen. However, you have one more day to do, to go. The dog Everybody is safe. Everybody get a long rest. Ooh. And feel free to role play if you wanted to do something after that. I thought I didn't mean to continue. The mouse he writes a uh, during the during this night he writes a uh, a story about like carrying crawlers in our streets question <laughs> mark. About I mean, you write about uh, how the, the city guard is doing its duty to keep us safe from from uh, creatures from the from the dark. Carrying crawlers on our roofs. <laughs> and uh, Brutrick would just like to mention. Wow, it really seems like we need to figure out a name or something for ourselves. It keeps coming up. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow's the last day for you guys. Come up with one. That's what your job ends. But I suggest the Bousy Brown Experience. Ah! We can workshop it. <laughs> That's the word I was fucking looking for last week. God damn it! <laughs> what, workshop? God, workshopping it, yeah. And I, I re-listened to the thing and I was like, oh yeah, it's, oh fuck, I, can't, I still can't remember what it is. I, I knew you would get some kind of 3 a.m. Uh, epiphany uh, moment uh, with it. 
that was that was fucking it. Oh my god. I re-listened to it and I still couldn't think about it. Uh, I, I tried finding it on like the tip of the tip of my tongue. Website. Were you talking about when we when we went to a, a literal workshop? Can you think of the name? No, it's it's um when you uh when you were talking to 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 Emmerich and uh, em Emmerich and Avi, uh, Emmerich and Avi, and they were like trying their slogan. I was like, ah, oh, we're we'll workshop it or okay, the, talking about the Trident name. That's what it was. Yeah. It was like three prong yeah. thing, and I couldn't remember what it was. Workshopping. Feel so yeah. much better. <laughs> oh, my mouse is messing up. I think I got some cat hair. Yeah, I got some cat hair stuck in it. Oh, I, I, I say to him. Um, feel free to continue. I say to him. Uh, well, we uh, we uh, work out of the tro tr skull, uh, troll skull in. We can be like the <coughs> the, the troll scholars. troll scholars. Um, uh, that's better. Uh, are, are we still going with that name for the place? I mean, I got the, I got the, the troll skull the other day. I mean, Sharp Teeth, you have no idea what Rat King is talking about. How he got the troll skull? Oh no, I'm, I'm mousy at this point. Oh, you came back as mousy. Okay, never mind. Rat King doesn't doesn't drink with the people. Oh right, yeah. you you guys went home and you're you're talking about this stuff. I yeah, gotcha. yeah. But I, uh, if someone could think of something good, because it, okay, this is the troll skull. That's that's great. Maybe it's the group name though. We have a chance of so much more than just the tavern name repeated. Well, uh, you were uh, the lords of the underdark, weren't you, Sharp Tooth? I, I, I am uh, the lord of the underdark. Yes. <laughs> well, we could be uh, the Lords of Troll Skull. Taking two things and smashing them together like that. It is good thinking. Simon, you got a big you got a big hat that probably has a big brain in it. Um, Any ideas? I uh, oh uh I've never really had to th think about something like this before. This might be one of those left brain, right brain things. Brew trick. Well, we name it after ourselves, though. Where are we? I think that's we're, the we're, a rag, we're a ragtag group of adventurers. <laughs> Bag tag. The rag tags. But it needs maybe something a bit more aggressive mixed in. So rag tag, this or the something rag tag or the rag tag lords. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> the rag of muffins. <laughs> no. Kerrigan comes to the door is like, I want to join. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> reference. <laughs> uh, well, um, if, uh, uh, if Rat King were here, he'd probably su suggest something like uh, the ragtag rats. <laughs> oh, we rat should have him over one night. Feels weird not Bossy. having him around. Bossy goes, the Rat Pack. I mean, because the Rat King's kind of uh, like your mascot. So you're like the, the Rat Pack. Uh, I thought the troll was the mascot. The troll pack? Um, oh. Maybe not that. I, I, I suppose. Uh, Given we can't think of anything else, uh, Rat Pack. It's pretty true. I seem to be out of blank here. <laughs> I can roll with that for a bit. Maybe we'll find out some more ad adjectives to spice it up further along the way. I pull out Clementine, and Clementine can be our, uh, our mascot, our official mascot. How many mascots do we have? Like three. But she can be the main, the, the main one. 
Does, does that live in you? <laughs> like in, in my pocket, yeah. You know about Clementine. Yeah, I know. I, I think I've asked this before, now thinking about it. Okay. <laughs> well, if you guys are good with the the rat pack. Yep. We will continue to day 10. You make your way back. Uh, who would like to give the final day's look? I think it's Brutrick's turn. Brutrick is also really excited to tell uh, Rat King that we're the rat pack because he really thinks he'll lighten his day. Do give me yes. a uh, perception check, please. He goes like, I'm not in it for the glory. That's a pretty cool name. Like, I thought I'd, uh... Oh my, this is, this is so perfect. You have no idea. Holy crap. Oh, I will. <laughs> Can't wait. Someone finds a holy crap on the, on the, in the street. This is, this is amazing. Okay. So as you're saying that, uh, you you you're about to go over to Mousy to to kind of like them. Oh, by the way, Rat, uh, not Mousy, but oh, hey, Rat King, we came up with a name for our group. And he goes, Oh, well, what would that be? Something uh, something clever. And uh, as you're doing this, you hear in the distance a, no. um, a someone on a horse. Uh, a horse. The horse kind of like neighs and like goes about its hind legs and something. Something startled it. And and Brutrix says, Rat Pack, and points behind uh, the Rat King. The horse appears to be frightened by a swarm of rats pouring from the gutters. I say, Rat Pack, that's a good name. <laughs> good, just, good job, Sharp Tooth, I like that name. Rat Pack. No, Rat Pack, Rat Pack! And then so Brutrick will go in the direction of um, all the those horse. rats. and Because he doesn't want the horse to get hurt. Okay, so we'll say that it happens all down and down here. So you you start running, and Rat King, you notice this as well because Brutrick is kind of like you know uh, heading off. You're you two are the closest to it. So what do you guys do? Um, there's like a swarm of rats harassing this horse. Yep. Can Brutrick pick up the horse to get it away from the rats? Uh, what is your what is your, you have the strength of uh. A large, large creature. Which means your strength is like doubled or something, or I forget, uh, lifting. Lifting, quick reference, lifting and carrying. Where, where Push trigger lift. Weight in pounds up to twice your carrying capacity or 30 times your strength score. What is your strength score? 17. 17. Plus. 17 times, I believe it's 17 times 60. When it's when it's twice, like it's doubled. So yeah, I'll say you can um, preach size category of double the creature's carrying capacity. So sixty times seventeen equals one thousand twenty. You can pick up a horse. Yay! <laughs> you pick up lift a thousand pounds. You pick up the horse. And the um, the rider, and all the equipment you're carrying, and you're like, don't worry, I'll save you from the rats. And you're also long armed, long limbed, so they're like extra high in the air. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, I'm um, eight feet tall, but I have ten feet arms, so it's eighteen feet. <laughs> See, you don't really well, have ten feet well, arms, but well, yeah, you you have. Six, he is up higher than, than, like, the horse has any right to be. And you start moving out of the way. Rat King, what do you do? Um, what could anyone do in that situation? Yeah. 16 foot horse in the air. <laughs> I'm not quite a, a subclass yet. But I just want to do an animal handling on this swarm. You give me... an animal handling with, with advantage. Since it's rats. Fifteen. You're able to like I got this guys. Rats! Behold, you're rat king! 
And after a while, like, some of them stop to look at you, and they kind of, like, nudge the ones next to them that aren't paying attention to look at you, and then all of a sudden, they're all sort of paying attention to you. I, I, uh, kind of clap, and I point to the opposite direction, away from the horse. Kind of look around, confused a little bit, and they listen to you. They they run back into to they they head off in the other direction, not back into the sewers, but into the other direction, away from the horse yeah. and away from any nearby people. Um, you hear another fights. horse down the alleyways. <laughs> 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 When um, it's safe, uh, uh, can, can, can you put us down, please? Uh. Absolutely. I just uh. want to make sure that there's no more rats here. Okay. And there doesn't seem to be any, so I'll put you down right now. Okay. Clunk. Whoa, whoa, Nelly. Whoa, Nelly. Uh, 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 thank you. Um, You are mighty strong. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Okay, bye. And he's uh, kind of like doesn't know how to react to the situation, so he just lifts up. Because first he was being attacked by swarms of rats, and then a giant, a bugbear in monk clothes comes up, lifts him and his horse over his head. It's quite a day. <laughs> so he ends up, he leaves. Not something expected. <laughs> no, I didn't expect to pick up a horse today. It's been a while since I've had to do that. <laughs> And with that, we head back to. We'll just super take your foot to the yawning portal. As you have finished your job, and you have made your way to Jail Esther, sitting in the same place that he's usually found. Well, I heard there was some quite uh, interesting things that go on. There was a, a dead body. Uh, don't know what that was from. Doesn't sound like it was gang related though. Uh, it sounded like there was a carrion crawler that you all took care of. Very well done. Um, some other interesting things that I heard rumors of, including somebody lifting a horse above their head. That was uh, that was strange, and he, he kind of like side eyes Brutrick. But no matter, you have uh, done your duty. Uh, no gang war was uh, no no gang violence had spilled over. Whether or not that was because you were there or just happen to be safe no matter is you've ha you made the the karen Cro the pff, karen girls the dung sweepers feel much safer to do their job probably did their job a lot better too so you have earned this he puts 100 gold on the table passes it to you guys what is the thing? congratulations and i will be contacting you again in the future Say so we can put this towards uh, renovating the renovating the inn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that's what I thought. We were, why we were doing it? That's yeah. a help goal too. So I'm just gonna move things along quickly. You eventually make your way back to the Troll Skull Alley. Is it uh, kind of later at night, or is it... Yeah, yeah, it's it's very night at this point. Mm. Much night. Much night. Well, I guess well, it's time to relax and go to bed after a hard hard day's work. I say to Mouse, I say to Brutrick as Mousy. It's like, I'm putting that in tomorrow's headline about your uh, feats of strength and Lifting a tire horse over your head, that's that's amazing. Oh, after you do it a couple of times, it's not so not so interesting anymore. You lifted one horse, you lifted them all. <laughs> yeah, not much different about horses. But uh, you know, anything I can do to help. So to continue, you are all able to get a uh You're all able to get a um, long rest. And what we can do next is basically if you have anything you would like to do for renovating the house, 
to, as we did last time, to make things... I'll definitely put that troll skull. Somebody... Uh, that was weird. Did somebody hear a loud... Yeah, I thought it was part of the background. Uh, um, it, does, it does sound to be that. Okay. Well, I'll definitely put that troll skull somewhere uh, where it's going to be noticed, like over the bar. Something like that. Okay. Let me see if I have some skull art. Skirtis gonna look around and to everyone and be like, have we figured out if this place is actually haunted or not? Is there any way that we can go about finding out if it's haunted or not? Do any, are, like, any... well, I, oh, I, I, I definitely saw someone write messages in the window. Like, on the, on the fog. Um, Damn, we gotta stop doing that. Uh, I I could possibly check to see if there's any like you know, magical remains in in the place, but I I don't believe that um uh that ghosts would appear in such a manner. He doesn't Do seem benevolent. He just it's not ready to move on. I think you just love tending the bar. Is there is there anyone that knows anyone? That knows stuff about ghosts? Will any of our neighbors know anything about ghosts? Um, not not in town, no. Um, I I could possibly uh, write to uh, to Candlekeep and uh, uh, see if they could um, uh, give advice. I guess. I could also write to my master and ask him if he knows anything about ghosts. He sure knows a lot. I mean, we've been sleeping here for a ten day. Has there, were there were there another occurrences you think, Mark? Pro probably other smaller things. Nothing. We'll say nothing of note, but other like creepy things that you've you've heard around. I will say that I have filled in some of your furnishings that you had requested and things that would be related to things that you would own, um, okay. as well mm -hmm. as. Uh, yeah, I see all the the sacks and the pamphlets. Yes. Yeah, have a sort of troll skull. I don't have a troll head, so we're just going to use this dragon yeah. head. The troll had a very long nose. <laughs> uh, and spikes. So maybe there's maybe there's a uh, priest in town. Yeah, you could probably find a priest or some sort of uh, acolyte or somebody, or maybe even a necromancer that would be able to to figure out if something is related to ghosts or something. I say a sharp tooth. Uh, do you know any good? Do you know? Do you, uh, do you know any good necromancers? Does sharp tooth know any necromancers? Uh make a history check. For uh, first, make an intelligence check to make sure you you don't misunderstand it as necromancers. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah we, we always <laughs> make that joke. Let's pass on it this time. <laughs> um. Ah, the groupies. <laughs> uh, yeah, you could probably... You're, you're not familiar with that many, but you you know that uh, you felt like, yeah, yeah, I know a guy. Not familiar with that many necromancers. He's, he's a necroid. That's what we call Which him. Which means he knows, he knows more, than one, more than a couple. <laughs> I know specifically three. <laughs> okay. Yeah, necroid, necroid Bob... You got Necroid Bob, Necroid Jim, and Biff. You got, you got a Grimlock the Undying. He's a character. Oh, I will I would also say, hold on before I continue, over here I added what is, is going to be a post box, and over here will be your message board. Um, oh, okay. I think uh, Sharptooth is going to send out a message to each of the people he may know. Okay. So Sharptooth is going to reach out for necromancers. Yes. Because it's just plain weird having stuff moving. Yeah, she's going to really creep them out. Yeah. God! Jeez! <laughs> so we'll say that uh, it doesn't cost you any, any extra postage. You can get it from a pocket change that you found somewhere. So 
Because I'm not going to bother with copper for things that don't, don't really matter like that. <laughs> So, with that, you all can take a long rest, get all your spells and, and whatnot back. Nice. The, uh, so what would you like to do? We'll consider this for the next 10 day or things that you can do to, to renovate. How would you like to try and renovate the house or reduce the cost of things? Well, we were going to replace some of the furniture, like the stools. With the help of um, Deuter and the other, and the bent nail. So that's going to be part of the cost of actually paying for all of this, for paying the reservation. So what we can try and do is if you want to negotiate a better price for it. Is that what you like to do? Sharp tooth. Sharp tooth, I think you're good at haggling. I think I, I, think I am. Go ahead and make a persuasion check. Well, first, what do you say to him? Yeah, yeah, what do you say? Was, oh, you come back for the beds, have you? Yeah. The, oh, something much, much more than beds. Oh. We have a whole tavern that needs something. Something that you got. Wood. What I got, huh? Go ahead and make a persuasion check as you try to haggle or, you know, with a nine? Yeah. <laughs> goes... Yeah, yeah, you're right. My stuff will definitely make your place shine. That's why I can't go a penny cheaper, because it's worth what I put onto it. An artist signs his name. Yeah. But think of the exposure that you'll have when everyone's coming to our tavern. And think of the exposure and money I'll have when you pay me. So, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, you do not reduce the costs. Yeah. Um, I'm putting that down in my notes. I don't know what else can we do. So, well, whatever so, you think of. Where we place? Um, can Brutrick volunteer at the Bent Nail to uh, in a barter system of uh, helping carry large pieces of wood around or moving around, like pe like the throwaway wood. Okay. For him, in exchange for, uh, say, fixing a certain number of stools or a table. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and make a uh, persuasion check for that. You go up to him and you ask, uh, you say, hey, can I do some manual labor to maybe just cut off some of the, the price of the, uh, of the, um, the costs of the things? Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, I, um, I, I like helping... Would anybody uh, like to give Steph, or would Steph like to use their inspiration? Because yeah, that one is really bad. That. Okay, so. It's okay, I was wondering if I could help and you immediately just break right. something. Like, you now so owe him people. fifty. You owe him fifty gold. No, so if you'd like to use your inspiration, click on the little square above your icon, the yeah. little the little blue thing. A window will pop up, and then you'll be able to drag the big square onto the drag and drop onto the map, and I will just uh, take it from you. Is it anywhere? Anywhere on the map, yeah. Oh, let me know where you put. There it is. <laughs> so go ahead and roll again. Oh, please. Please be something better. Oh, no. Much better. better. So you are able to, to do a little bit of work with it. Um, however, you do break a couple of things as you're doing it that he's going to have. And nothing that beyond repair, but it's just more, more work for him. So you don't make as much as you could have, but you do manage to knock off 10 gold off the price. Thanks. Uh, also note, um, uh, Simon does know the mending spell for any uh, little fixes and stuff. Okay, so we'll say, go ahead and make it Arcana check as you are going around doing mending on anything that you are finding. Because you're kind of investigating and you're going to to mend uh, necessary detail. Natural 20? Whoa. Whoa! You found a major, major leak in the pipes. And you managed to track down each of the cracks and seal them. Saving you 100 gold pieces. Okay. Um, 
Balsi would like to buy some uh, some nice flowers and plant them in the front of the okay. Front of the tower. All right, so go ahead and you're doing landscaping. So go ahead and do, let's say, tra- probably a nature check to find the pretty flowers and do the actual landscaping. Nature? Nature. Five. Uh, oh, you were five. able to, you were able to, you buy five gold worth of flowers. And, uh, no, we'll, we'll say, we'll say, yeah, go ahead and mark off, because you want to buy flowers, go ahead and mark off five copper pieces, because you bought five copper pieces worth of flowers. And you're able to save, we would say, the the cost to offset it is also five gopher, copper pieces. So you have saved no money with the, with what you have, have chosen. Nice. What's sharp to I, do? Uh, I already tried. I thought they looked like I thought they looked nice, but it turns out like they're they're weeds, and not flowers. Yeah. And there's that creeping. Yeah, look what I found. It's this thing. It's this cool plant called kudzu. You just put it down, and it just keeps growing. <laughs> like, check out this plant I got. I got it during the total eclipse of the sun. <laughs> Yeah, I buy some kudzu. <laughs> I'm, I'm from Georgia. There's this everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you, even up here in Virginia. You have knocked off a hundred and ten gold pieces off of the total. Sweet. Bring your total Sweet. down to one thousand forty-five gold that needs to be paid. You can knock off a, up to a, a total of a thousand. Uh, because you won't be able to knock off. Well, you might be able to knock off some guild costs, but for the most part, you're do, you're doing the res- renovations. I, I would say to everyone, it's like, uh, think we can do this? Uh, well, with 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 time and dedication, uh, one can uh, it can do pretty much anything. I mean, I think we're ready for the responsibility to run this place. Uh, oh. Sorry. I can't imagine we can do worse. I'm willing okay. to give it a shot. A thousand gold, though. If only we had that, uh, that, uh, dragon horde, the missing gold. Wouldn't that be something? The next time you all head downstairs into the main area, bar area, after having this discussion, you find on the table a full set of cups and a rag next to it. The cups seem very clean. They're nice. It's really nice. Oh, oh. Not me. It must have been Simon. It must have been Simon. He's like the cleanest of us all. Uh, I I don't remember purchasing any of those, and I don't remember the, seeing them in any of the drawers. I haven't. Yeah, Brutric. Yeah, Bru- yeah. yeah, did you take? The, did you uh get that from the yawning portal? No. Are you implying I would steal? No, it was like. It's like a parting, a parting gift, saying like, "Thanks for your, thanks for your work. Here's some glasses. Don't break them." <laughs> no, unfortunately, they didn't give me too much when I left. Instead of the freedom from my servitude, I cannot bring over. Unfortunately, for some reason, I cannot bring over objects and size them accordingly when I drop them. I used to be able to do that. And for some reason, it doesn't work anymore. That's fine. I'm amusing myself by think by imagining uh, uh, ghostial uh, glasses enlarging themselves and shrinking uh, in front of us. <laughs> We're just so caught up in how yeah. they are. We don't care about the enlarging and shrinking. Do I recognize these glasses? Do we see them when, uh, when we're cleaning up the place? 
make a perception check or investigation. Bertrick gets closer to check them out. Uh, you can do it as well, Bertrick. 14. Is it investigation or what? Perception. Bertrix, you've not seen these before, and you're very careful not to touch them because you know what happens when you ha carry glasses. Um, Mousy, you're not, you don't think you saw them around, but they are all branded with the old logo of this place. It's always called the uh, Troll Skull Banner. Is that the pretty, only pretty much, yeah. Well, at least up yeah. until the the last place, but yeah, it's got the old, the old branding on it. I say, well, these glasses must have been hidden away, and maybe our uh, friendly poltergeist decided we need to spruce up the place. That makes sense, right? Um. Uh, hi highly, um, uh, yeah, uh, I, I suppose. I mean, that's What's off. That? Giving us a gift of glasses? I think he's welcoming us into his place. Yeah, um, was that necromancer friend here supposed to be here? Like, maybe? You you uh, put the, you put the um you put the post mail in the post box this morning. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I don't uh, understand why he's in here already. I put the mail <laughs> in the box. I'll be next day delivery. Um. It's like, well, he seems friendly enough, but I just want to make sure that uh, no, he's won't turn bad on us. Um, well, we, we, we could always like, like, uh, uh, pay hom homage to him. Uh, have you found any uh, portraits of him, perhaps? Like a like, sacrifice? No, no, as in like, um, uh, like a, um, I, I suppose you could say shrine in a way, uh, just uh, um, some kind of uh, portrait or t uh, uh, homage <laughs> to, uh, to the previous owner. Is there any port? Have we seen any portraits of this, of this guy around? Uh, you have not. You might be able to find public records if you look, look uh, around town and, and stuff. However, in the in this manner, you have not. A, a plaque could always end up uh, being a good substitute as well. Uh, mm -hmm. He suggests. You can say, uh, "What was his name?" Leaf. It's like in Leaf. L I F. In in re in memoriam to the previous. Owner, Leaf, drinks in the last call. Because that was his catchphrase. You hear two of the glasses clink together as if it were to say cheers. I scream like a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> and for once, uh, and for once that wasn't Simon. <laughs> You know, it seems to, seems to like that, and uh, I make a point of going to the steam and steel and see if they make a pot for us. Uh, you talk to them there; they they can do some engraving. <coughs> I'll I'll include that as when you open the uh, as part of the renovations that you can get. So you can just add that um, to the. Uh... So we'll just you'll you'll get a plaque when you finish when you actually open the tavern. So that's good enough. All right. With that, one of you decides to go out and check the uh, as you're walking by uh, the notice board, and you do see something posted on the notice board. I'll be sharp tooth doing it. Yeah. Ah, what's this? You see, like eyes are getting closer because his vision's like not great, so he's just like leaning in. This posted. Uh, 
message saying stolen my prized bessie has been stolen has been stolen because i typed <laughs> this when i made it you oh, like a year ago uh i must have her returned safely to me will pay come see me in the undercliff godfrey rursk well not bessie oh no oh well, sharp is gonna be like ah, this is like the easiest thing in the world to do and then like kind of like guttles back into the tavern like I found more work for more money. There's a Bessie, and we just gotta go get her. <laughs> we gotta go to Undercliff to figure out more about Bessie. I hope Bessie's okay. okay. Uh, what is Undercliff? What's a I Bessie? <laughs> so to point to point things out, as I know you're doing this in character, but just in case you don't know, Undercliff is the part that is basically the farmland that is just outside the city. Technically not What's a ward, but it is a major area. Oh, okay. Underfoot. Okay, up up in the north. Uh, oh, north. is, is uh, uh, water deep on, uh, on like a plateau or cliff? Uh, it is. A, it does appear to be on a raised sort of area. Yeah. yeah cool. At least, so at least on that edge. It's probably it's probably like Rome. That's on one of the like the major hills. I say uh, some farmer probably lost a pig or something. The prize pig. It didn't. Uh -huh. It didn't say what a Bessie was, or who she was, or they were. Uh, well, if we visited this person, we could ask them for more details. Um, it, it would. It would be useful to learn things like what they look like and stuff too. But um, do any of us have any skills in? I, well, I, I, I suppose uh, Rat King it has more <coughs> experience in tracking things down. He mostly deals with rodents. <laughs> Maybe well, a Bessie's a rodent. Indeed. Mousy kind of says, No, I, I wouldn't uh, mind coming along with you on this on this adventure. Uh, it, it does sound uh, less dangerous. We just have to find a pig or something, right? I wouldn't mind getting, getting out of the city. Um, It'll be nice to have you like, alone, Pepsi. You'll finally be able to meet the Rat King. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, dear. Um, I don't know if I'm ready for that. I mean, I talk to him all the time. Um I guess or yes, you already have met. Yeah. I really hope we have a so, mission where you have to basically Mrs. Doubtfire the whole uh <laughs> like the whole thing. <laughs> like the uh the uh, the scene in the uh in the eatery where you you keep showing up and like one yeah. of your ears is still on. <laughs> you know, I can break, you know, I can ask the right team to go. I mean, I just kind of want to that was the ghost that's it's me moving the chair out of the way because nobody else wanted to. <laughs> okay. I mean, I can call the Rat King if you want. Like, I was saying, like, I, I <coughs> wouldn't mind. I mean, how could we be the Rat Pack without him? You know, yeah, you're right. And I pull out my fake sending stone. They go, Rat King, we need you. And I put it back in my pocket. He'll meet you at the edge of the city. Oh, great. How <laughs> you on this trip? Mousy, you never seem to come along as much anymore. Well, I'm not a fighter. I'm just a writer. Normal <laughs> oh, every day. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, you all decide to eventually head off to the Undercliff to see what the deal is with this Bessie, why they're missing, and how much money you can get. And that's what we will call it for today. Mostly the I think, money. It, I think at this point, Mousy is like, it's like, oh, I finally have some friends, but I technically can't talk about to them about all the stuff we do together. You're, you're getting a Peter Parker syndrome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>